Howdy, y'all. It's Ryan from r and Music, your favorite mom and pop guitar shop and music lesson studio deep in the heart of Texas. That's where I'm at. We often have steak for dinner in Texas. All right. We're going to do a little live hangout and chat um, and uh, kind of fill y'all in on what's been going on with us. Welcome. If you're new here, we have uh, my wife and I, Angela. I'm Ryan. She's Angela. We have a little guitar shop and music lesson studio in a very small town in East Texas. We've been doing this for over a dozen years, 13 years. Hello, David. We've been here for 13 years, teaching lessons, selling guitars, making music, keeping the music alive. So that's what we do. Um, and occasionally we do live streams. So tonight's live stream I've been thinking about for a couple of days. And... Uh, I'm going to just fill y'all in on some stuff. The title is, How Going Carnivore for 60 Days Has Made Me a Better Guitar Player. What does that got to do with playing guitar? All right, so we'll get into that. First of all, we're going to talk about some health, wellness stuff, and then I'll talk about some guitar stuff. Hello, David. Thank you for tuning in, man. This will be interesting, I hope. So um, we have a question on our Ask RNA. I think we're going to film our Ask RNA um, Probably tomorrow around noon, Texas time, Angela and I are going to film our Ask RNA. And there was a question about losing weight and stuff on that. And we'll definitely answer it there. But I've been meaning to talk about this for a couple of days. We just closed the shop. Angela went home. And this is a good time to talk about it. All right. So if you don't know, um, if you don't follow us on Instagram or Facebook, any of that stuff, you may not know. We've been doing this crazy diet for today is actually day... 61. Day 61 of the carnivore diet. If you don't know what the carnivore diet is, it's kind of all the rage right now. Um, Jordan Peterson has done it. Joe Rogan. Uh, Michaela Peterson. Jordan's daughter. It's, there's a lot of people talking about it. And uh, I'll give you some backstory. So I've kind of always been a big dude. I'm like six foot two. I'm, you know, I used to think that was tall until I had children and my sons are six foot eight and six foot six. So they're freaking ginormicas. And uh, yeah, so six, two, I don't, is, I don't know if that's even tall anymore when your children are six, eight and six, six, but I'm six foot two. Um, right now I weigh about two twenty two, which is kind of light for me, honestly. So when I was in high school, I, I grew up eating that garbage, like a trash panda my whole life. So when I was 18 or so when I was a senior in high school, I weighed like 270. So six foot two, 270, which is, uh, you know, overweight. <laughs> yeah, no raw. I don't like the raw stuff, Griddle. I don't I don't do the raw carnivore thing. I got to I got to grill my carnivore stuff. All right. When I was in high school, uh, I think my heaviest in high school, I was like 270, 275. And uh, always been, you know, from probably seventh grade on kind of a chubby kid when I was you know little I wasn't chubby but I also have a thyroid problem like my thyroid literally doesn't work it's not like just making excuses hey you're fat I'm like no that's a thyroid problem <laughs> I literally do have a thyroid problem I'll talk about that later but uh so I was always a chubby kid I mean not always as a teenager I got on a little bit on the chubby side anyways 270 ish in high school um, by the end of my senior year, I went through some stuff and I, I kind of like stopped eating, uh, a depression, I guess. I don't know, something, some stuff happened and I, I started losing weight. And then when I got, uh, I was like 270 probably in the fall of my senior year. And then by the, by graduation of high school, I probably had gone down to like 240 ish. I was probably 240. And then by maybe my first or second year in college, I got down to 195, which from 275 pounds to 195 is a significant amount of weight. And so in college, I got down to 195. I was not healthy. I just didn't eat. So I was suffering from depression. Parents got divorced, a bunch of other stuff going on. And uh, I just didn't eat. So that was it. Not, I wasn't working out. I was in the marching band and it was summertime in Texas and college football games and college stuff and being very active, but I wasn't like going to the gym and all that kind of stuff. So um, that was, that was pretty, that was pretty thin for me. And then 
you know, I eventually stopped being depressed, kind of worked my way out of depression. And then, uh, you know, at about, uh, I forgot when Angela and I got married, I was 23. So I probably weighed about two, 230 ish when I was 23. Got married, life kind of continued on, and then eventually kind of gained the weight back. And uh, for most of my adult life, most of my 20s and 30s, and, you know, early 40s, I, I tend to sit around about 260, 270 pounds, 275 pounds. Like if I'm just eating whatever I want, whenever I want, whatever, that's kind of where I, I sort of sit. Now, I got some buddies who are some big old dudes, like 300, 350, 400, 450 pounds. Like I got some friends who are some big old fellas. So I know they would love to be like, bro, 280, that'd be amazing. Like, well, it's all perspective. For me, it was the heaviest I ever got was 284. Yeah, <laughs> to the heaviest I ever got was when I lived in Tulsa. I weighed 284, and um, I've gone, I've done like every diet out there that you could think of. There's like you know Atkins, and then there was you know counting calories and Weight Watchers. I never really did Weight Watchers, but you know all the different things. Eating just whole grains, no sugar, just all the different stuff. And I, I, I'd lose weight, you know, and then I would gain it back. I would lose it, and then I would gain it back, you know. So that's been my entire life. And then what year is this? So probably 20, 2018, 2017, 2018. I can't even remember now. Time has no meaning. Um, <clears throat> my health started getting a little not great. I, in my, I think, late 30s or early 40s, my blood pressure started getting up a little bit. Um, I got into that pre-diabetes range, like where your blood sugar is... Not diabetic, but it's above normal, which means you're pre-diabetic, which means you're on your way to diabetes, which apparently is like 80% of Americans are pre-diabetic and most of them don't even know it. So I kind of got to, I got on a health kick and trying to get a little healthier. And when my doctor put me on blood pressure medicine, that really freaked me out because my dad is on like, my dad is 81 and he's on like 10 million prescriptions. He's got blood pressure got diabetes stuff. He's got neuropathy in his feet because he has diabetes. So he's got medicine for that. He's got, he's got medicine for like just a million things. And he used to say, he's like, oh, you're going to have high blood pressure too. I do. I'm like, well, dad, you eat like a billy goat and you're stressed. So anyways, uh, mine did sort of get up there because I was overweight. I was obese. Technically, I was not morbidly obese, but I was obese technically at, you know, 270 pounds, six foot two. Um, and so that kind of freaked me out. And then right after I got on the medicine, I started kind of working towards getting better, eating cleaner, exercising. And then I had, uh, Angela and I, we had two friends pass away. So I had a really good friend of mine. His name is Charlie. And I played, um, I played with every week at church. He was a drummer. We've been friends for years and years and years. And Charlie was probably 52. He's about year eight years older than me. So if he were still around, he would be like 55, but uh, Charlie died at 52 and he was uh, a great musician, a great drummer, but he was overweight. He had the big belly, skinny legs, big belly, smoked a little bit, <clears throat> drank a little bit, ate Whataburger a little bit after gigs, you know, didn't really take care of himself and he had a heart attack and he died. And, you know, and then about, you know, 10 months before that, one of our friends, Angela's friends from Tulsa, um, her husband died. He was 47. He was a police officer, massive heart attack uh, in their house. And his wife was there and like trying to save him and he, he didn't make it. And that was a real eye opener. I was already on a journey to like, I ain't going to be on this medicine. I'm going to get off this medicine. Um, but when Brian, um, passed away three young children and a wife and then charlie passed away two young kids and a wife i was already had been exercising and eating better and i was like oh snap this is not good we got to get real serious about this so i kind of kicked it up a notch i found a diet that worked for me so in 2020 i wrote this down i got it i gave you numbers in 2020 i started the coach greg diet <laughs> greg do set YouTube, IFBB Pro, freaking Greg. I love Greg. 
He's so good. So in 2020, where did me put, let me find my numbers. Uh, in 2020, I started a diet. I had done diets before that worked. I can't find the stupid stuff. There it is. Okay. In uh, January of 2020, I was 263 pounds, uh, which again, normally I sit around, I would sit around like 269, 271, whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. I can't see how many people are on the thing because I'm on StreamYard. Anyways, because um, it, was, it was in like 2019. 2019 is when I really started getting serious. So Coach Greg, Greg has a diet. He calls it the circle diet. Circle, because it can be for boys or girls or circles. If you're not a boy or a girl, you are one or the other. But anyways, um, so Greg's diet made sense. And um, it was basically the, the, the crux of it is Coach Greg, his diet is high volume, low calorie food. So high volume means it takes up a lot of space in your tummy but it's not a lot of calories and you can eat what you, I mean, you can have pizza, you can have ice cream, you can have, you know, whatever burgers, you can have stuff, but you have to get really creative with the ingredients and you have to kind of learn to kind of hack the ing ingredient ingredients, hack the ingredients. And Greg's all about the diet sodas. He's like, freaking, you know, you are not going to get cancer from aspartame. So drink, as many as you want. He would say, no calories, no problem. I'm like, that's what's up, because I love sodas. <laughs> and so um, high volume, low calories. So what does that look like? Well, I ate freaking French toast every day for like two years. So Greg has a French toast recipe where it's, you know, you get egg whites, get a carton of egg whites, pour it in a glass container, put a bunch of vanilla in it. We use Mexican vanilla here in Texas. It's amazing. Mexican vanilla. Uh, a bunch of sweet and low, a bunch of cinnamon, and a thing of egg whites. Whisk it all up, and you keep it in the fridge. And then when you want some French toast, slap your bread in there. It could be high-protein bread, P28 bread. It could be regular ass bread is what Greg calls it. So just regular white bread. Wheat bread, white bread, whatever you want. doesn't really matter. You put your bread in the uh, egg white vanilla solution. Soak it tremendously so it's a lot of egg whites, which is a lot of protein. Cook it on, cook it on your whatever you cook it on, and then you get sugar-free syrup. Which, by the way, I figured out Mrs. Buttersworth is what's up. All the sugar-free syrups suck except for Mrs. Butterworth. It's pretty good. Fifteen calories for two tablespoons, you know. So I had Mrs. Buttersworth sugar-free and uh, French toast every single morning, and I make a giant caramel coffee, like the kind you get from Starbucks, like a, a blended frappe. I would get cold coffee, either the Starbucks cold coffee from Walmart or the Stoke cold coffee. Put it in my Ninja blender, get the low calorie, like 30 calories a cup of vanilla almond milk or almond milk, 30 calories a cup. I put like two cups of that in there with my coffee. You get the sugar-free salted caramel flavoring, stick it in there. Xanthan gum. Xanthan gum is a secret. And then a buttload of sweet and low, a bunch of ice, giant, like literally like 70 ounces of blended caramel coffee uh, and some whip, whippy cream. And that stuff, like literally 70 ounces of a blended giant caramel, salted caramel coffee, which was about 120 calories, right? This giant thing, 120 calories. You go get a frappe from McDonald's, it's like 800 calories for this little thing. It's all sugar. So I had a giant blended coffee and... French toast every freaking morning for like a year and a half, two years. Um, have wraps. You got to get the low carb tortillas. Like you got tortillas that are like 45 grams of carbs, high fiber. Or you can get a tortilla that's 180 calories, right? So you, the low calorie, high volume, make some, put some chicken, turkey, whatever in it. Um, you know, he had pizza recipes. He had protein ice cream. That was my jam. So I get the Ninja Blender. You got, you know, you could put, it was a uh, sugar-free, fat-free um, chocolate pudding, buttload of protein powder, ice, um, fat-free Greek yogurt, a uh, bunch of sweet and low, some cacao, cocoa powder, psh, you know, xanthan gum again. Blend that 
blend that biscuit up and it's a giant, literally like 70 ounces of freaking basically like ice cream. That wasn't really the texture of ice cream. It was more like a Wendy's Frosty. If you've ever had a Wendy's Frosty, which are freaking awesome. And you can put powdered peanut butter on it. Oh, I put peanut butter on my French toast. Now, not real peanut butter, powdered peanut butter. And I would get the powdered peanut butter, mix it with a bunch of cinnamon, you know, some water, make some cinnamon peanut butter to put on my French toast. It's freaking awesome. Anyways, so you can go and go watch a bunch of Greg's. He's got, I would look at the Coach Greg diet. He's got like what I eat in a day to stay shredded crap. So anyways, January 2020, I was 263. October of 2020, I was 225. So I went from 263 pounds January. And then, you know, in, in 2019, I was really, I was like 270 in 2019. October, I was 225. I haven't been 225 since I was in college. Like the lowest I've ever gotten weight wise in my adult life. I got down to like 247, 247, I think uh, back in 2014 when my buddy, Pat David Gray from Australia, Pat David came to America and hung out with us. And I was, I was just kind of chicken, broccoli, rice, you know, chicken and like, uh, you know, just eating zero sugar. Basically I was doing a zero sugar thing in uh, 2014 and I got, you know, again from 270 down to like 240. Pat came for a week and I had to, we had to feed him Texas food, pizza, Tex-Mex, you know, uh, he had never had, he had never had um, chicken fried steak, mashed potatoes, like all that stuff. He had never had any of that mess. So he didn't know, he didn't know what was going on. So I had to, uh, we had to cook a bunch of crap. For Pat. And so for a week, I ate like garbage when Pat was here. I'm not blaming Pat. It's all, it's, I'm blaming me. Let me get over here. There I am. Hey, there's six of y'all watching. Hey. Um, so for a week, I ate like garbage and then Pat left and then I kept eating like garbage and I gained all the weight back. But anyways, January 2020, 263 down to 225. So when I got down to 225, I was like, holy crap. Um, hello, Sheldon. Um, it was, uh, as soon as I got in 2020, when I got to that 247 mark, which I hadn't been since 2014, I was like, this is crazy. Coach Greg, um, like I wholly endorse like his diet and way of eating. And it was, um, crazy. I didn't really hungry, really feel hungry. I would eat that giant protein ice cream, like literally 70 ounces. I would eat that at the end of it. I was like, Oh God. I shouldn't have eaten that. Like, oh, I think I'm going to pop. But that giant thing of protein chocolate ice cream was like 280 calories, maybe 300 calories. Like if I had eaten that much of like Ben and Jerry's, it would have been like 3,000 calories, right? So Coach Greg, high volume, lots of protein because of the anabolic diet. He has an anabolic cookbook, right? So a lot of protein. A lot of volume. He's big on the, the popcorn. Like you not all popcorns are the same. Skinny pop is horrible. Don't eat skinny pop. Orville Redenbachers makes something called Smart Pop. Smart Pop, you get a whole bag of it. It's literally a hundred calories. A lot of other popcorns, a bag of it, it's like 400 calories. Well, same amount of popcorn. 400 calories, 100 calories. Eat the 100 calories. You can eat, you know, you, you'll be stuffed, right? Sheila says, hey, Ryan, I love the channel. You are correct. I eat very little sugar, no wheat, dropped 27 pounds since last year. Walk three miles a day, and my resting heart rate is 54. Turn 60 next year. Dude, <laughs> that's awesome. Good to hear that, Sheldon. I do two miles a day, but that didn't, I didn't, I lost all that weight. I went from in the 260, 270, 225 in 2020. I wasn't exercising at all. I, was, I literally just changed my diet. You know, copious amounts of zero sugar sodas um you know i did the greg diet and that worked so october 2020 i was 225 uh i did i kept i stayed at 225 for two years um nearly two years year and a half year and three quarter nearly two years i i got stuck at 225 well when i got down to 225 that's when i started walking and i watched uh coach greg but also i watched will tennyson who's on youtube same thing. He's, he's a young guy, but when he was in high school, he was kind of a fat, fatty guy. And then he, you know, got crazy. He got too skinny, like starved himself, kind of like I did in college. 
I didn't get as skinny as he did because when I was 195, I was still like pretty. 195 is still like not skinny, right? But I was skinny for me. Um, but anyway, one of Will's things, Will Tennyson, is that he walks 10,000 steps a day. 10,000 steps a day. He does that 10,000 steps a day, plus he works out and all this other stuff. So I thought, I'm stuck at 225. I don't want to eat less. I should probably move more. So I started walking. And interestingly, I didn't really lose any weight from the walking. I started doing doing the 10,000 steps a day, which for me, if I'll do at least a two mile walk or two and a half mile walk every day throughout the rest of my day, going to the store, coming to work, doing whatever, I'll get to 10,000 steps. If I walk for two miles at some point in the day, I will get to 10,000 steps through the rest of my activity. When I first got my Apple watch, I think it was October. I think it was October of 20, actually. Um, I was tracking it. And because I sit in a chair and play guitar all day and, and play drums and play piano and I sit and talk to people, my, I was getting like two or 3,000 steps a day. Maybe four, but that's not much. Now, interestingly, when I started walking every day, I kept up with my diet. I didn't really lose any weight, though. Um, so I don't know if the walking made me hungrier. I probably ate a little bit more Coach Greg diet. But um, I didn't really lose weight, but I did. I think I did get healthier. I started to see like veins. <laughs> I'm like, oh, look, I got veins. Amazing. Um, and it was good for my cardio. And then when the C word, when the coronavirus kind of came through, <clears throat> I still walked. I still walked every day. So even when, you know, we got it, everybody, everybody got it. I could still walk. I would go walk outside. I, now I walked slower. I started to walk as fast and I didn't always walk as far, but I would still walk even when I was sick, sick, you no know, rain or shine, whatever, sick, hot, cold. You know, we had sub-zero temperatures in Texas last year. We have triple digit temperatures in Texas. I walked anyways, no matter what. So it became a game and I got an Apple watch. I'm not the kind of guy to spend $200 on a watch. I'm just not that kind of guy. But I was concerned about my heart rate because I was on blood pressure medicine and I was on heart rate medicine. So I was like, what's my heart rate? I got freaked out by it. So I had to start tracking everything. Um, so anyways, Coach Greg, great. Love him. Watched all the, every single morning when I was making my French toast and coffee, I watch his videos and I watch other health and fitness and diet videos like how to cook, you know, low calorie foods. Um, then I guess it was probably in probably December of 21 or, you know, January of 22. So January of 2022, I crept up from 225 to like 229, 230. And then, uh, which I thought, well, that's only five pounds. Five pounds is like, I can lose that. I lost 50 pounds. I can lose five. That's not that big of a deal. But uh, it kind of continued. So in uh, 22, I started kind of uh, slowly cheating on, to on Coach Greg. <laughs> slowly cheating on Greg. You know, we have anniversaries, bunch of birthdays right in a row. Every month it was a birthday. Um, you know, just Christmas, uh, Thanksgiving, all this sort of stuff. So I kind of started cheating on Greg a little bit. And I was like, my, my A1C score was great. I went from being, you know, pre-diabetic. My A1C was like a 5.7 or 5.9 or something. And I got down to a 5.0, which was like perfect blood sugar. I was taking a really low dose metformin. My doctor put me on preemptively because, um, my, again, my blood sugar was pre-diabetic. It wasn't diabetic, but it was pre-diabetic. And I was in kind of the middle range of pre-diabetes. So the Coach Greg diet helps me get my a1c score down perfect um lost all the weight wasn't ever really hungry but then live i guess i got i coasted for so long and i was so successful i had never lost that much weight and then kept it off for like a year and a half that's i'm like this is i can do this the rest of my life this is great but through circumstances i started cheating on cheating on greg a little bit so i was maybe only like 70 percent adhering to my coach greg diet i would still have the protein french toast every morning I was eating the popcorn, but every now and then I was getting some Nutter Butters. Every now and then I get a bag of Skittles. I never went back to drinking real sodas. I did not do that, but started having a few more 
not my own coffees, but coffees from like the Pony Espresso or uh, Starbucks or something. I'm like, ah, I'm doing really good. I'm, I'm working out, exercising every day. I'm eating really good. I can have a coffee. I can have a blended coffee from somewhere else. And so over the course of, uh, you know, by by February, February of 23. So in January of 22, I was 230 pounds or 229. So about a year later, February of 23, I'd gone back up to 243. So I got down to 225, stayed there for nearly two years. Then over the course of about a year, put on about 15 pounds, sort of cheating on my Coach Greg diet. Uh, again, I didn't put it all back. I didn't put the 50 pounds back, but I put 15 back. And I was like, well, that's, I, can still, I can still do it. I know what to do. I'm just going to go back, eat the popcorn, eat the French toast, eat the protein ice cream, eat the, you know, the chicken and turkey wraps and do all this stuff. Uh, but I kept falling off the wagon. So um, when was it? Oh, I guess it was. Let me go back and look at my calendar. So back in May. So May. Oh, oh, yeah. So May 25th, May 25th of 2023, I was 240 pounds, 240. May uh, 25th. So May 25th is when we started doing this carnivore thing. So I had a buddy, my friend Steven, who was like, we went to have breakfast one time and I was telling him all about the Coach Greg diet and how it worked for me. He's like, I'm thinking about doing this carnivore thing. I'm like, what's that? He's like, you just eat meat. I'm like, oh, it's like the Atkins. It's like, you know, it's whatever. I said, I've done, I've, it's like keto. I've done keto. I couldn't stick to keto, but I've done keto. It works if you can stick to it. I found it really hard to stick to. I was like, oh, it's like keto. I was like, no, it's like, it's not, you are in ketosis. You do go keto if you're in carnivore, but carnivore is basically zero carbs. When I was doing keto, I was having, uh, you know, 40 to 50 grams of carbs a day. So I could stay in ketosis between 40 and 50 grams of carbs. Some people got to be 30 grams of carbs or less. I could be in around 45 grams of carbs and be in ketosis. I just couldn't stick to it for longer than two or three months. I was like, I can't do this anymore. I need it. I need something. I need whatever. So I couldn't keto works, but I couldn't stick to it. And then I found the coach Greg diet and that worked for me for like two and a half, three years until I started cheating. But uh, Steve was telling me about this carnivore thing. And I'm like, I don't know about that, bro. I, th I think I'm going to stick to my coach Greg thing. I'm just going to go back and be real strict coach Greg. Um, but I, I didn't. Um, now in May, like the last week of May, I found that um, here at the shop, I would grab a snack from Dollar General, these little pizza sticks or whatever. And I was just kind of snacking like, you know, crackers. And I was having like little pizza pocket things and just and I was eating like the week before we started carnivore. Ow, scratch my arm. I was like for like three days in a row. I was just eating. I was eating like all day. Here at the shop, snacking. I would, I would have my French toast, uh, protein, Coach Greg, French toast for breakfast. And like, I'm going to do this again, right? And then throughout the, the day, I would I would snack on crap. And then I, would, I was starving to death. It felt like I was starving, but I was eating a lot. I thought, this is not good. And then my when I had my blood work done again, I was like, oh, crap. I was like 5.0 perfect A1C score. And now I was back to 5.9. Shoot a monkey in the face. Shoot a monkey in the face. I'm back in pre-diabetic range. This sucks balls. I do not like this. And so, and I, but I, I was like, I don't know. Then I, Of course, I watched Jordan Peterson stuff, and I heard him talking about the carnivore thing and Joe Rogan and all these other people. And my buddy Steve is the one who planted this, the, the seed. So I got to thank my friend Steve Jennings. Thank you, Steve. Because he was going to do it. Let's do it. And um, taco diets are not good unless you want diabetes and heart disease. Kind of. Depends on the taco. Um, so I thought, you know, I got to do something, right? Because I'm just struggling here. And I'm, I think, I think, well, you know what? One of the guys I always said, just do a 30 day challenge. Try carnivore for 30 days. See what happens. Just commit to it for 30 days. See what happens. And then, you know, at the end of 30 days, if you want to go back to doing what you're doing, go back or if, you know, whatever. So I thought, you know what? I need to do something. So I, I decided to do the carnivore diet. I kind of, my viewpoint was I was going to do it as like a hard reboot. Like when your computer is acting up, you, you know, your router, <laughs> your router for your modem is acting up, you unplug it, 
wait 30 seconds, plug it back in, it reboots, and now your your Wi-Fi works, right? So I thought, I'm going to try the, we'll, we'll talk about that in Civinity. We'll talk about this in a minute. So stick with me. I know this, I'm rambling, but let, let, we'll get there. So I thought, I'll do this carnivore thing for 30 days as like a hard reboot. And then I'll probably, I'll go back to the Coach Greg circle diet where you can have carbs. You can have carbs. You just have to have like fiber and, you know, it's low, you know, whatever. Uh, so a hard reboot. I'll go back to coach Greg and not cheat on Greg anymore. That was my plan. And of course, Angela, she's been struggling with some stuff too. And she's like, I said, Hey, I think I want to do this. She's like, let's go, let's do this. So Angela was all on board to do it as well. Now, of course, if she didn't want to do it, it wouldn't matter to me because the whole time I was doing the coach Greg diet, she was not doing coach Greg diet. Like, she's like, I'm not doing that. I'm like, okay, well, that's what I'm doing. Cause you know, it was the two husbands that died of heart attacks and not the wives. The wives are still alive. My two friends are dead. Their wives are still going. Their kids are great. They're dead. So I'm like, I don't care what anybody does. I'm going to do this because I'm going to get healthy. <laughs> so um, so we started the the 30 day carnivore challenge. A lot of people, talk, that's the thing that's come out. We've talked about it. People are like, I can't afford to do it. I'm like, can you afford to die? You know how much medicine costs? But it, really though, we spend less money on food now that we're doing carnivore than we spent before when we were buying a bunch of other crap. I mean, people think meat is expensive and it's like, yeah, but so is crap. So is cookies. And so is our chips. And so is bread. And so is pizzas. And so is fried chicken. And so is hamburgers. And so is like hamburger buns and pickles and Pringles and chips and candy and, you know, nuts and peanut butter. And, you know, so, we actually haven't, we have really haven't spent, we have, we actually spend less money now than we did before doing carnivore. So you just got to look at your situation. What do you spend on food? Do you even know what you spend on food now? Like, can you tell me what you spend on food a month? We spent a lot of money on food, like a significant amount of money. Went to Walmart, Dollar General, Chicken Express, uh, McDonald's, Whataburger, you know, a lot. So <laughs> we were actually, we're actually saving a lot of money by doing this anyways. So, uh, you know, the first, the first day it was on a Friday. I remember it was a Friday. We decided to do this and, you know, I kind of had, I had French toast for breakfast and I had stupid snacks all day long and I was just freaking starving. So by the time I got home, I'd probably already eaten 2000 calories, but I was like, yeah, we're going to do this. Um, Yeah, I was, uh, I was, sorry, I'm reading the comments. <laughs> Savinity, I saw you. Um, I was, I decided, okay, we're, I'm going to have a steak for dinner. I just had, it happened to like the week, in Mother's Day, I went to see my mom and they cooked steaks. So I happened to get there and they had cooked steaks. So I had a steak. Now I had like two baked potatoes and bread with butter on it with my steak. Um, I do a little bit, but we'll, I'll talk, we'll talk about the exercise here in a minute. Um, but at my mom's, I had the steaks. I was like, these steaks are good. Of course, so is the baked potato and the bread and the butter and all the stuff too. But uh, anyways, that first night, I ate like crap. And then that night, me and Angela both ate a big O steak. So I cooked a big O sirloin. We each had a sirloin for dinner to start our carnivore thing. And so the next day, Saturday, we woke up and I was not hungry. I, mean, I had a big, huge steak the night before, but I'm used to waking up hungry. I wasn't hungry. I think that Saturday, our first real full day of carnivore, like we didn't eat till like two o'clock because we weren't hungry, which was the shocking thing. It's like, you know, people eat because they're hungry, right? I mean, sometimes you eat because you're bored. Sometimes you eat because you're sad. Sometimes you eat because you're happy. Sometimes you eat because you're depressed. Sometimes you eat because it's your birthday, you know, but generally you're like a lot of people eat because they're hungry. We weren't hungry. So about two o'clock, the first day, full day of carnivore, you know, I cooked another steak. We had steak. And then like, I swear to God, I was good for the rest of the day. Like the whole rest, of, I probably had one meal that day because I wasn't hungry. I was like fully satisfied. I think I had a coffee still. So I, I'm kind of, we, I've kind of done the dirty carnivore. Real carnivore is like zero carbs. I wasn't ready to go zero. So I still made my coffee, which probably has about four grams of carbs in it for this giant 
coffee. So I, I, I probably I was probably having less than five grams of carbs a day. So I mean that's close enough because I didn't want to give up my coffees. <laughs> so um, anyways, so like right out of the gate, it was really good. Because I was the week before this, I was eating all day long and I felt like I was starving. I just couldn't eat enough to get full. And I was like, this time is wrong. Right. And so immediately going to the carnivore and having steak, we, we have steaks. We'd have Angela like pork chops for about a week and a half. She had pork chops every morning for breakfast. You can have scrambled eggs, any meat that you want, eggs, some dairy. Needs to be because some dairy has well milk has carbs in it, milk has sugar in it, lactose. So not really milk, but some cheeses you can have. Some cheese has some carbs, some cheese has zero carbs. Yeah. So it just kind of depends. And I I've watched probably in the last 60 days, I've probably watched a hundred or so hours of videos on YouTube about carnivore from doctors. There's several doctors, medical doctors talking about it. One heart surgeon who's a carnivore guy said you should do carnivore so you don't have to be on my heart surgeon table. Yeah, you know, I've just watched hundreds and hundreds of hours. Well, at least 100 hours of videos. So while I was trying it, I was doing my research. And uh, honestly, I got to say it was super awesome. Like energy, there was no afternoon crashes because I wasn't having carbs. So I didn't have that sugar spike and that crash. I also stopped taking my metformin. So on the first day of doing carnivore, Angela was like, I think you should stop taking your metformin. It's like, because you don't really need to take it. You know, we'll just see. So I stopped taking my metformin. And I was, my fasting blood sugar when I woke up was like 105, 106, 108, which is still not diabetic, but it's still pre diabetic. If you have a higher than 100 fasting blood sugar when you wake up in the morning, you're pre diabetic. It might be 102. 102 is pre diabetic. You know, 99, not pre diabetic, right? So when you're between 70, and 99 is normal blood fasting blood sugar. From 100 to 125 is pre-diabetic. 126, you got diabetes, homie. You got the beatus. Oh, Savinity said his metformin messed his wife up. Oh, that sucks, man. I've been taking it for several years. Now, on the Coach Greg diet that I was on, they had me taking metformin like a low dose twice a day. I was on two blood pressure medicines twice a day, one metformin twice a day, and, of course, my thyroid medication I've been taking since I was a little kid. Now, uh, Coach Greg diet, when I got down to 225, when I got to 225 and I was sitting there for six months, Angela was like, you need to stop taking all that medicine because you started taking that when you were like 270. You're 225 now. You probably shouldn't take that. So I cut all my medicine in half. I took, you know, I got down where I was taking one blood pressure medicine twice a day. I have one blood pressure medicine once a day instead of two twice a day. And I was taking one metformin once a day instead of twice a day. So I cut, I cut one heart thing out completely, one blood pressure thing out completely, one metformin out completely. And then I went into my doctor and they had my blood work done. She's looking at me. She's like, Oh, you're looking great. All your stuff looks perfect. I'm like, well, by the way, I quit taking half this medicine six months ago. She's like, Oh, really? Well, that's great. Just keep doing what you're doing. So, oh man, a thousand milligrams. Crap. I think I was on like 50 milligrams twice a day, but I have to go look at the dosage because I haven't taken it. A thousand milligrams is a lot. My Angela's dad is on metformin. My dad's on metformin. We have a lot of diabetic people in both sides of our families, but they all eat like trash pandas too. So, you know, that's a lot, man. Ew. So I got, you know, on my Coach Greg diet, I got off all that stuff. Um, so I, I cut all that down. So right, right now, on the first day of uh, first day of carnivore, day one carnivore, I stopped taking my metformin. I was only taking it once a day, anyways, and I stopped taking it. I did start taking my blood sugar like a maniac. I used to only take my A1C score like every three months. Every three to six months, I get my A1C score done, which is a, the most accurate blood sugar test you can have done to see if you're diabetic or pre-diabetic or normal. Um, but since I wasn't taking the metformin anymore, I wanted to check it every single day. And like the first week and a half of carnivore, I was still waking up 105, 106, 103 with my blood sugar. Uh, 108 maybe sometimes, but mostly in this. I was like, oh man, it's not going down, but I'm having zero carbs or I'm, I'm having four grams of carbs a day. 
super low grams, tons of protein and fat. Uh, and then like a week and a half in, my blood sugar started going down into like, oh, it's 98, it's 96. It's not, holy crap, I'm working, I'm waking up with my blood sugar in the 90s and I'm not taking metformin or I'm not taking any medicine for my blood sugar. Holy snap. This is what I wanted, right? So Angela's a little bit different. She's in that age. She's she's 45. And so she's got that kind of pre-menopausal, perimenopausal, like hormonal, like, you know, hormonal shifts that women go through sometimes in their 40s, starts messing with their hormones. And so she was kind of doing it because she heard it helps with that. It has been amazing for her. I'm going to let her do her own talk about carnivore and what it's done for her. But it's been freaking amazing. And she loves it. And it's been a crazy good thing for her health-wise. So let's leave it at that. So my blood sugar got into those normal ranges with no medicine. And then there's a couple, I think in week three or four, it got down. There's a couple times it got down into the 80s. And I was like, oh, snap. I'm in the 80s. Fasting blood sugar. Holy crap. This is awesome. That's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to lose weight. I wanted to get back, you know, from like 239, 240. And then I wanted to get back to 225 if I could. That's kind of weight wise. That's kind of what I wanted. But more important than that, I wanted to get off some medication. <clears throat> so that was my ultimate goal was to get off the metformin completely. And I have I haven't I haven't taken a metformin in 61 days. So I'm 61 days in no metformin. Blood sugar is pretty good. It got really good for a couple of weeks. And then lately <clears throat> now you can probably hear to my voice. My voice is kind of shot for like the last week and a half or so. I've, I've kind of had like a. a a chest cold. Uh, it's I don't know if it's allergy season here in Texas, but I've had like a little bit of a cough, out drainage, sore throat. So I think I'm finding an infection. So my blood sugar has actually kind of crept back up into that uh, low 100s, like 102, 103 range, even though I'm not eating any carbs. Um, but what we do know from our family members, like Angela's dad, if he gets sick, Okay, when he had when he had COVID, his blood sugar went up to like 600. So anytime her dad gets an infection, a cold, the flu, COVID, whatever, his blood sugar goes berserk. And so I started Googling it. I was like, why is my blood sugar high? And I'm like, well, yeah, if you're fighting an infection, if your body is fighting an infection or an injury, your blood sugar can be elevated because your body produces blood sugar. It's like you cannot eat any. Your body will make some. Your liver, your pancreas makes glucose your body will produce its own glucose right so i've heard about the ozempic i've heard some stuff about it Savinity. um so a vein right there so uh, i haven't had any uh, any metformin in 60 days and that's great weight wise so we both i lost about 20 pounds yeah down about 20 pounds and Angela's down almost 20 pounds. So now we did that like in 20 from you know day one to I think day 26, I was back to 225. So in 26 days, I got back down to, hey, Big John, in 26 days of carnivore, I got back down to the 225 that I was stuck at for two and a half years. And then for a year, I couldn't seem to get back to 225 after I was cheating on my coach Greg died. So in 26 days, I got back down to where I wanted to be before that I was mad about not getting past. And now I'm, I'm happy to be 225. So yeah. It only took 26 days of eating steaks. Yay. Steaks, hamburgers. Uh, you missed about 35 minutes, big John. Oh, 43 minutes. I'm just rambling on. You can always go back and watch it. I need to be more concise. It's hard to be concise when I'm live because I just ramble and there's no editing. So anyways, 30 days into the carnivore thing, we, we hit 30 days and it was like, that was the goal. We're going to go 30 days and we're going to decide. And my plan was 30 days carnivore. I'm going to go back to my coach Greg diet and just be strict with it. However, it was so easy and it was so satisfying. And the success that we had with it was so great. I was like, well, crap, if that's what 30 days looks like, I wonder what 60 days will look like. What, well, what's going to be lurk in 60 days? So I decided, all right. 30 days down. It was actually a breeze. It was super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Mm. That's good that you walk, Savinity. Um, 
I, I'm telling you, I watched, I've watched so many doctors talk about this carnivore diet again, because I've been every single day I'm cooking my steak or I'm cooking or I'm making my coffee or I'm doing whatever. I'm watching videos about carnivore. It was the only thing I've watched for like the last three months is videos, ZZ top videos or carnivore videos, right? So many of these videos, they talk about people reversing their type two diabetes, reversing pre-diabetes, reversing, you know, blood pressure stuff. There's like a whole bunch of stuff that people have been able to like do strictly from their diet. You know, it's been really kind of shockingly eye-opening. So uh, now here's the thing about the weight though. So it took, it took me about 26 days to go from like 242 back to 225. So it's back to 225. And then I kind of stalled. I've kind of sat at 225 for like the last 30 days. Now I'm like 222. So I, I kind of like, I'm just stuck there at 225. Now, here's what happened though. 30 day, 30 day challenge, 30 day carnivore challenge. Got to day 30. I was like, this is freaking awesome. I feel great. Blood sugar is great. I'm, I feel healthier than I've ever felt. Um, now, I've already been walking every single day. I've been doing the 10,000 steps a day for uh, 1,000. Today is day 1,007 of 10,000 steps a day. So I've been walking nonstop. I had never stopped the walking, but the walking is not what lost any of the weight for me. I didn't lose any of the weight in 2020 from walking. I lost it from my diet. I didn't lose any weight on this carnivore thing from walking because I was walking the whole time. Walking is just for my heart health and cardiovascular health and, and that kind of stuff and flexibility and movement. So now 30 days carnivore, it was great. It was amazing. It's not a problem. I didn't have any side effects. I wasn't stuck on the, on the pooper for like two weeks. Some people talk about if you go from a really horrible diet of eating garbage all the time straight to carnivore, you may have the Frida's for a couple of weeks. Joe Rogan talked about that. It was just explosive diarrhea for like two weeks, right? I think, because I, I had been mostly on the Coach Greg diet for a long time, which is which is already a high protein diet and pretty clean, really, that I think my system was kind of already primed to go into the carnivore. So I had zero side effects, zero negative side effects. It was not a problem for me to go carnivore. So here's what happened. 30 days in, it was great. It was amazing. Super happy. So excited. And 30 days flew by like that. And then so I thought, well, that was a cool 30-day challenge. I'm going to go for 60 days. Like, if this 30 days was so amazing and we had such good success and I, I was able to lose that weight I've been trying to lose for a way that I couldn't, I, you know, I just had to eat steaks. And now I'm to that weight I wanted to get to. And my blood sugar is great. So 30 day challenge, it was super easy. We should do another, we should do some other 30 day challenges. So here's what happened. I think, here's what I think happened with my weight. Um, I decided to go, all right, I'm going to go 60 days carnivore, but I'm going to start two new 30 day challenges, two new 30 day challenges. So I did, uh, on, on day, you know, day 31 of carnivore, I said, all right, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do pushups. I'm going to do push-ups because I don't normally do push-ups. Like we have, we have weights and stuff in the garage and the, the garage is kind of a mess right now. And we had a little bit of a flea infestation from a cat that was in the garage. So, I mean, I've got a Bowflex in the garage. we got a weight bench. We have a freaking hundred pound boxing bag and we have all this crap in the garage and I got weights in the house, but I wasn't really using them. I just been walking for a thousand days. Um, but I thought, you know what? I can't really get in and get to the bench press or the bow flex right now, but I can do pushups. So I started doing, I was, I'm going to do a 30 day push up challenge. So I'm just going to do push ups every single day. I'm going to get down. I'm going to do push ups. I'm not going to do like 100 a day or 50 a day. It wasn't that kind of a challenge. It was, I'm going to do however many I can do in one session to failure. <laughs> like, how many push ups can you do before you can't do another one? Uh, day one, it was 10. I could only do 10 push ups on the first day. Like, uh, and number 10 was like, Let's go. Come on. Ah, failure. It's pretty bad. Well, I'm tall. I'm not as tall as my sons, but I'm, you know, six foot two and I kind of have long arms and I'm top heavy. So I was like, well, that's 10 push ups. Okay, great. 
So I started doing push-ups every day. So I've done push-ups every single day for the last 30 days. Today would be day, yesterday was day 30 of push-ups every day. And also day 30 of practicing guitar every day specifically. I'll get to that in a second. Um, and so the push-ups was great. It was 10 days and it was 10 the first day and it was 12 the next day. And then it was like 13 the next day. And then it was like, I don't know, 14 the next day. I, I was adding on to it. And then about a week and a half into the push-up challenge, I hurt my back. I was loading a bunch of plants for my dad, a big giant flatbed trailer full of plants. I was loading them, unloading them twice. And I tweaked my back pretty good. I'm like, ah, pulled a muscle, did something to my lower back. And I was like, ah, crap, that's not good. So that made it difficult to, difficult to walk. I still did my walking every day. I was doing bleachers, uh, the push-ups. Once I hurt my back, the push-ups kind of took a hit. Like some days I would do like countertop push-ups, like, you know, on the, the countertop in the um, <laughs> yard work. Yes. Countertop or, you know, tabletop push-ups because the angle is a little, little easier. So I could do those. It didn't hurt my back. We bought some, you know, cushions for our knees. So get down and like do push-ups on the floor. So with the back injury, I was only able to, I could, I could get out about, 10 or 11 push-ups before my back started like I'm like oh, I, I, I better not do anymore I could probably do it more strength wise but I was like I do not need to injure this back I need this back to get better so uh yesterday actually was the first day that my back hasn't hurt in about two weeks and yesterday was day 30 of push-ups and here's the end result last night at like 10 o'clock at night I did 30 push-ups because my back wasn't hurting so I was able to I actually did kind of muscle out 30 push-ups. I was like, ah, <laughs> what could, what can you do? Day one, I can only do 10 to failure last in 30 days. I could do 30. So I, I went to 30 push-ups. That was pretty good. So doing the push-ups, you know, we walk every single day. So I go to the track and do the walking, do the walking. I've been walking for over a thousand days. So I'm pretty conditioned to the walking. We'll, we'll walk. We're walking. Angela goes with me a lot of the times and I'll look at my watch. And I'm like, Hey, Say, hey, babe, what's your heart rate? She's like, my heart rate's 136. I'm like, what's yours? I'm like, mine's 102. Walking. It's 34. Is it? Thanks, Pat. So we're out walking around the track. Her heart rate's 136. Mine's like 106. So I think I've been doing it for so long. I'm super conditioned to it. Like, I need to go faster, but I don't want to run because running hurts my knees and hurts my back. I don't want to run. Uh, you know, and there's no hills in the track. So I decided when I started the push-up challenge, well, we're at the high school, there's the bleachers. So we're out here walking. I'm seeing these people going up and down the bleachers. I'm like, that looks like that sucks. Ugh, I should probably do that. Poop. So we would walk. We'd finish our two miles, eight laps around the track, two miles. And I'm like, all right, babe, I'm going to go do the bleachers. So I started doing the bleachers, like, brr, like up and up and down the bleachers. Now that would get my heart rate up. My heart rate would get up to 140. I'm like, all right, that's the freaking hard. Walking for two miles at you know three and a half, four miles an hour. It's not that hard. Walking up and down bleachers with this big old 225 pound guy. That's hard. So I started doing the bleachers when I started doing the push-up challenge. So in the next 30 days of carnivore, I was doing bleachers every single day. I bought a freaking weighted vest because a friend of mine who walks a lot was like Ryan. You've lost a lot of weight. Have you thought about a weighted vest? I'm like, bro, I have thought about a weighted vest, but they all look like tactical plate carriers. Tactical plate carriers. I don't think I can walk around the high school track with a tactical plate carrier on and not look kind of suspicious like I'm a terrorist or something. But they do make weighted vests that don't look so tactical. So, yeah, I can't run. Like, I got a bad, I got a bone. I got some shrapnel. I got some shrapnel in this knee, so it doesn't like running. Um, we would jog a little bit. There's a couple of times we would run from the 100 yard line to the 100 yard line. I was like, hey, babe, let's run. Angela used to run track when she was in school. And so we would run. I beat her the first time. I beat her the first time. And I was shocked that I could actually run in 100 yards. Like I ran for 100 yards and I was like, what is happening? Eat some meat, run. <laughs> So that was pretty fun, you know. So I started doing the bleachers every single time I go to the track. Every single day after I do the two miles, I would go up and down the bleachers 
I would, as many times as I could before I'm like, whoa, okay, we can't do that. So I think what happened with my weight is after 30 days, I started working out more push-ups, bleachers. You know, I got weights here at the shop, lifting weights. So I think what happened is there's a doctor. I think his name is Dr. Chafee. He's a medical doctor. He's American, but he lives in Australia. He's a freaking brain surgeon or something crazy, but he's a medical doctor. He talked about for him because he was an athlete. He was a rugby player guy. And he's been doing the carnivore thing for five or six, seven years. I don't know. Long time. And he said for him, because some people don't lose the weight. He said what happened to him was like the first month he was doing carnivore, he lost about 20 something pounds or so, 20, 30 pounds. And then the weight loss stopped after a month. But his body kept changing because he was working out. And so he was actually he was still burning fat. But he was at the exact same time speed he was burning fat, he was building muscle. So Dr. Chafee, he said, you know, the weight loss stopped at a certain point, but his body composition kept changing. So if he was measuring it, like his muscles were getting bigger, he was losing the fat, and it just sort of stabilized, right? And I was like, huh, oh, that can happen. I'm like, okay, well, why has my weight not moved down? Now, my weight has – I've only lost maybe – three pounds in the in the second and the next 30 days of carnivore i've only lost three pounds of body weight however <laughs> hey big john however i started working out more so on top of my ten thousand steps a day i started doing the bleachers every single day which will build your leg muscles my leg muscles i've always had really good leg muscles you want to have jacked calves good thighs just be a fat guy for 30 years that's all you gotta do Fat guys never have skinny calves. If you're a big old dude, like I got calves for days. I used to go into the gym. We had a gym membership for like two years here in town. I'd go to the gym. I'd be on the treadmill, incline, going up the treadmill. I'd see all these young high school dudes come in. They got their sleeveless shirts and they got their biceps. Uh, uh, and their biceps and their shoulders. And they're like, brr, brr. and I'm looking at their calves. I'm like, bro, you should do some calf raises, son. I don't know. They're all focused on their on their biceps and their shoulders and stuff. That's fine. You sh- you know, whatever. But they all had like not so great leg development. I'm like, bro, I don't even work out my calves. And I got like cacao, calves. I got calves like a maniac. So I got great, I got great calf muscles. I do need to work on my biceps a little bit. I got to work on my upper body strength. <laughs> but I got lower body strength for years. Not a problem. Just carry around, carry around a big dude. Started doing a weighted vest on my walks, weighted vest on the bleachers. So I think my weight, I think I'm still losing. I know I'm still losing fat because I can tell it in the mirror, but my weight isn't changes, but I think I'm building muscle too. So there you go. So that was 60 days of carnivore. Now the other 30 day challenge, let's talk about guitar. Now, and any of you guys have questions, please. I know there's like nine of us hanging out. Thank you guys for being here and listening to me ramble about food and health stuff. Um, however, 30 day challenges, man, this is pretty rad. I'm pretty happy about this. Um, so after 30 days of carnivore, I said, I need a new 30 day challenge. So I'm gonna do the pushups, pushups every single day for 30 days. And then I'm going to do, I need to do a guitar thing. So my guitar challenge was, thank you, Savinity. Yeah. It's like, you can, I mean, people have said in that you can see it, right? Like I went from, again, I've been I've been sitting at around 239, 241 for like the last the last year. I've been floating around 235 to 241, somewhere in there for like the last year, where I was 225 for like two and two and a half years. So again, in 26 days, I'm back to the 225 that I was stuck at. However, however, uh, like you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm 225, but I don't think it's the same 225 I was before. Like, I think, I think I've got, I've got more muscle now at 225 and less fat than I did at 225, you know, a year ago. So we'll see. Um, all right. Try the Ola challenge between your gun comp and now is a difference. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gun, the gun comp, the shooting range stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's like it's, I'm still the same weight, but my comp the body composition has changed. So I think I'm I'm not gonna take off my shirt for you guys for <laughs> that. But it's like I think I'm more I'm a little more muscular now and uh, a little less flabby at 225 than I was a year ago at 225. So I'm curious now. I, I've done this is 60. Yesterday was 60 days of carnivore, and now I'm like. I think I got to go 90 days. I think I got to do, because it's been really easy. It has not been a struggle at all. Um, and I freaking love steaks. I did learn, you do kind of need to buy the better steaks. Like if you buy the really cheapy, cheap steaks, they're not that good. But if you get to like the tops, the sirloins that are very marbly, lots of fat, uh, man, I'm going to eat one tonight. When I get, I had one for breakfast. I had a little small sirloin for breakfast when I go home tonight. I mean, it's 8.20 now, but when I get home tonight, I'm going to cook another steak. I'm going to eat that joker, and it's going to be awesome. I have learned if you if you go to your local grocery store, like we have a Brookshire's. Brookshire's in East Texas is a, uh, it would be like an H-E-B, you know, in other parts of Texas, or it would be like a Kroger's or, a, you know, whatever kind of grocery store. If you go to Brookshire's about 7.30 in the morning, that's when they put out all the meat. That's like, hey, half off. We need to buy this today, like meat that's been there for like a day or two. They're like, okay, it hasn't sold. We need to move it. So about 7.30 in the morning, Brookshire's will stick out all this meat. Like you might get a sirloin that's like 15 bucks, seven bucks. You know, $20 sirloin, 10 bucks. You can buy, I'm like, that's what's up. So you can go, so you can go, uh, you can go, there's ways to do it. Again, we're spending less money on food now, even though we're buying steaks and hamburger meat. You can buy the giant log of hamburger meat. Put it in the freezer. Like hamburger meat works. You can just have hamburger meat. Make hamburger patties. You can make, you know, taco seasoning. Make just taco stuff. Put some cheese on it, you know. Anyways, there's a bazillion YouTube videos. Like carnivore diet. Dr. Barry. Dr. Barry. And uh, Dr. Chafee are two literal medical doctors who are all about this carnivore thing. Go, like, watch, like, 50 of their videos and you'll, like, know more than I do. Oh, yeah, the Ola Challenge. He, he does a drum track. And, like, Savinity is like, yeah, I've never done. I've I've downloaded the drums from Ola once. I was gonna do it, and then I just didn't do it. So I should do it. All right. So guitar challenge. So thirty day carnivore challenge. I turned it into sixty days, but I wanted. I felt so good about the thirty day challenge. I want to do something else. So I did a push up challenge for thirty days. I'm gonna continue the push ups. I'm just gonna keep keep doing them. So it'll be a sixty day push up challenge. Maybe I can do sixty push ups at the end of sixty days. I don't know about that. Um. Yeah, I don't know if they have a Brookshire's where you're at, Big John. Um, maybe they do. I think they got a Brookshire's. So they got Brookshire's in Paris, Paris, Texas. But pretty any of those food, any of those places. No, I haven't seen Walmart do it. Walmart doesn't really put out their clearance meat. All right, I haven't figured out when Walmart does it. I'll tell you, Walmart steaks are really good. I've been eating the fancy Walmart steaks, and they're great. But Brookshire's, if you get there like 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning with the meat section, they're going to have a bunch of meat out there half off. So just go every morning or go every other morning to get some. So um, so the guitar challenge, I decided, you know what? I'm going to do a guitar challenge too. And my challenge to myself is um, I've been doing this ZZ Top thing. I've been, <clears throat> well, this last month has been crazy. We haven't been able to practice, but uh, I've agreed to do this ZZ Top. The ZZ Top cover band thing with my friend. So I was on a, I was learning all these songs and, I was uh, like, there's a lot of guitar in ZZ Top, and there's a lot of guitar solos. Good. Yeah, Big John, get there like 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning and go to Brookshire's and go to the meat section and send me a picture of what they got. Because well, there's uh, for the Canton Walmart, the Canton Brookshire's, there's some good deals on meat. All right. So I decided, you know what? All ZZ Top solos, and I probably can't even play one now. stops all the zz top solos it's all just pentatonic blues right that's all it is and so as i, I mean i know my pentatonic scales like and 
all five positions of the pentatonic scale. Like I know all the positions of the pentatonic scale, right? I've learned them all before. I teach them to our students, right? We tend to learn them in like A or E, so A minor. Or E minor. Those are the rock. Those are the rock keys, right? A minor, E minor. And I tend to teach them. I teach them in A minor because everybody does because it makes sense. Right? But uh, a lot of ZZ Tops, their songs are in C. Sharp dress man is in C, so you're C blues. So they're doing... right, it's in C. So it's in, under pressures in E. Uh, um, uh, waiting for the bus. Uh, Jesus just left Chicago. Is in G. You know what? I got to learn all these easy top songs and all these easy top solos. One thing that probably helped me is if I got better at navigating my pentatonic blues scales, my pentatonic scales and my blues scales in multiple keys all over the neck. Because Billy tends to, he doesn't just sit in one position and noodle. He tends to like jump all over the neck, right? So my scale challenge, I thought if I can do, if I can walk two miles a day and get 10,000 steps for a thousand and seven days. If I can do carnivore for 30 days straight, if I can do push-ups for 30 days, every single day, I can sit down and practice the freaking guitar with a very specific goal in mind for 30 days. So my specific goal, was, my goal was 30 minutes a day for 30 days um, of just reviewing my pentatonic scales and the blues. Pentatonic and blue scales. So I already know the, all the positions, right? I can do the whole. I can, I can noodle through all the positions, right? And just connect them. So I started to do that. But just put on a backing track. I found I forget where the channel is. I, I'll I might put it I might put it in the description of this video after it's over. I found a channel that's just just stinging just backing tracks, just all day long backing tracks. And he's got he's got sections for like rock, country, blues, you know, jazz, whatever. It's all these categories, multiple keys. I found a couple. Uh, I picked some like all right, C blues, G blues, E blues. A blues, a couple multiple keys. So I would just turn it on and just I would just turn on a backing track. Turn on a back. This this might sound like crap, so I'm sorry if this I don't know if this is gonna work on the streaming. I'm gonna go find one of them real quick. 
and just kind of show you what I would do. Uh, where are you at? Mm -hmm. Oh, here we go. Okay. Let's see if it. So there's uh, this channel. They're, they're all like they're all like two like ten minute long tracks, right? So I just put that on for ten minutes and just like okay, this one's in C. You know, so for ten minutes I'm like noodling in all the positions of the C blue scale across the neck. And now I pull up another one. All right, let's do it in G. And, and not just sit in you know, position one or position two, but moving around. So thank you, says the two dogs, 826. Looking good, big guy. Two years into 100 pound weight loss. Keto plan myself. Awesome. Yeah, I've been I've been carnivore for 60 days. Uh, I did buy the keto strips just to test it. I'm like, I'm definitely in ketosis still after. 60 days still ketosis but again i'm i'm doing the dirty carnivore dirty carnivore because i still make my crazy low calorie giant blended caramel coffees iced coffees in the morning which has probably got three grams of carbs in it so i have a three gram carb giant caramel coffee every morning so uh carnivore is supposed to be zero carbs zero carbs that's what it's supposed to be and some people are real militant about it, and they'll do like they call it the lion diet is like literally meat, water, salt. That is the most extreme version: meat, water, salt. That's it. I'm like, f that mother effort, because I am going to have me a Dr Pepper Zero, because I am not a psychopath. You're probably not supposed to have zero calorie sodas. But I am, because they keep me sane. They're not, they don't give you cancer. <sighs> and it keeps me sane, right? That's my that's my sweet tooth treat. That's how I live without sugar and stuff. Is anyways. So yesterday was day 30 of running my scales in multiple keys. And I I filmed it a couple of times. Like I've got one 10 minute video, me just walking around the living room like noodling. I think it was like day 15, noodling through, you know, whatever. I don't know what, I don't know what key it was, but I was just noodling. And I, I just filmed it for myself so I could look back and go, well, how do you know if you're getting any better? 
because on guitar and drums and piano and singing and anything artistic, drawing, painting, you know, whatever, or like literally everything in life. A lot of times your improvement is so incremental. It's so small each day that you don't even really notice it. Like, you know, it takes a lot of days, consecutive days. Don't skip any days, consecutive days in a row of working on a skill before you kind of actually notice that's any better. A lot of times you don't feel like you're any better, but if you filmed yourself for 30 minutes practicing whatever on day one, and you filmed yourself on day 15 of doing the same thing, and you watch them back to back, you will see that you are definitely doing better, right? So I filmed myself on day 15, like noodling for myself, you know, just playing through my scales. And then I think I filmed the one day before yesterday. I was just playing. And I was I was watching it back. I was like, oh, that's pretty good. Oh man, that did not suck. There, I mean, there was a couple of bum notes in there, but I was like, wow. I think that sounds okay. And it was like, it was a practice session. It wasn't a performance. It was a practice session. So I was like, for a practice session, basically improvising for 10 minutes straight, I was like, huh, I think I'm better than I was 30 days ago. I don't, I don't know how much more confident I am. I'm, I'm super, I'm super self-confident. I mean, self-conscious. <laughs> I'm not super self-confident. Like, I think a lot of musicians, a lot of us are probably, we, we are our own worst critic. I think I suck. I think I'm terrible, honestly. Um, but. Because I know so many people who are so good. Like I have friends who are freaking amazeballs guitar players. I mean, Robert Baker is a freaking amazing guitar player. We're buds. David Wallman is a freaking awesome guitar player. David Wallman is so much better than you even know. Like if you watch David's YouTube videos, you can say, oh, this guy can play. He can obviously play guitar. Well, that makes sense. He's teaching you stuff. He can obviously play. When I went to the clinic at Flipside Music in Denver, Colorado, home of the Flipside Blues, David, there was a clinic, Vola. Uh, was it was a Vola? Yeah, it was a Vola clinic. Vola and uh, Rev clinic in Denver. And David came... <laughs> And like played a bunch of his like original music and just like ripped it. Like I was like, I've known David for like we've known each other for forever, and we're friends. And David is the sweetest, most humble, wonderful guy. I love David. And he just started playing some stuff, and I was like, Where has that been? This holy crap, David. That's like ridiculous. Like he is so good. I've never I've never seen him play that kind of stuff because he doesn't really. He doesn't really like show off on his videos. Anyways, so regardless. So there's there's a thousand, there's a thousand, ten thousand dudes and dudettes out there on Instagram and, and YouTube who can just like freaking rip it up, right? So I'm always comparing myself to these people who can just rip. So I'm like, well, I'm not, I'm not, you know, Rick Graham. That's good. If Rick Graham is good, what I am is not good. But the reality is Rick Graham is a freak of nature and is not even human. To call what Rick Graham does good is an understatement. It's like, so I am actually probably good. They're just freakishly, freakishly amazing. So, right. So I am, I, you know, it all does, but it does all come down to practice. So I know like the more I practice, the better I'll get. Now, if I don't practice or if I practice like once a week, or twice a week, or every seven days, like, I'm not going to get any better. No. I play guitar every single day. I teach every single day. I teach drums every single day. I teach piano every single day. I teach stuff every single day. But that doesn't mean I play every single day. That doesn't mean I'm practicing every day. Practicing is working on the stuff that you suck at and trying to get better. Playing is just playing. Playing is fun because you're just, it's the stuff you can already do. So, I made it a point to like, I am going to practice. If I can do carnivore for 30 days, if I can do push-ups for 30 days, I can, I freaking love music and I freaking love guitar. And I have a really big challenge ahead of me to learn like 15 ZZ Top songs and all these guitar solos, which I have been practicing ZZ Top. That's not part of my 30 minutes a day scale practice. That's a separate practice. But I really honed in for the last 30 days 
on all these blues, blues and pentatonic scales because I know I build that foundation of those scales. Those are the scales Billy Gibbons uses to play all of his solos, right? You major, you major on the, the basics or whatever, however they call that. It's like if you hammer the basics, everything will come together. So I don't know. This I just wanted to make a video because I haven't done a live thing and talked to you all in a while. Um, I thought I need to talk about the carnivore thing. I felt like it would be a good thing to talk about because it's been a journey we've been on. Today is day 61. I am I think I'm for sure going to go 90 days because some of the doctors I've been watching said you really should go 90 days. Have your blood work done at 90 days to really get the full effect to see what's going on. Veins. The one thing I've noticed is like, man, my veins are like, I didn't used to have, I didn't used to have noticeable veins. <laughs> that's like interesting. Anyways, that's a little vein. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think I'm, I'm going to go 90 days. Get my blood work checked again. I did. I did have my A1C done. Thirty days into carnivore, no metformin. Before I started, it was a 5.9. Thirty days in, which is really not enough time to really make a huge difference in your A1C score. Thirty days of carnivore, my A1C had gone from 5.9 to 5.5. 5.5 being perfectly normal blood sugar ranges, and I was not taking blood sugar medicine of any kind. So I'm extremely curious. I should go do it again tomorrow. I might do that. Or I may wait for day 90 to do my blood sugar A1C again. So that's a lot of rambling. Let me, let me, uh, oh, let me, let me look real quick. All right, you guys, Savinity, Savinity, the two dogs, Big John, who's all here. There, it says there's uh, 10 of y'all here. So who, who all is here? Y'all say hi in the chat. I know Big John's here. Savinity's here. Two dogs, 826 is here. Who else is still watching after an hour and 21 minutes of rambling about carnivore? Do you guys have any questions? I just talked. I don't know who Sophie Asmussen is. Hey, Sophie Asmussen. Savinity. Yeah, if y'all got questions, like throw some out because I'm, I'm kind of out of topics to talk about. Um, I think I covered all the the carnivore stuff, the, th the other thirty day challenges. So, y'all y'all ask me a couple of questions, and I'm I gotta wrap it up here in a few minutes because be late. Somebody's texting me. It's probably oh, it's Ike. Oh, <laughs> Ike is messaging me. Hello, Ike. <laughs> Man. Yeah, if you got some, if y'all got any questions, just holler at me. Let me get back to the. Uh, yay. there's me again. I'm gonna send it to Anthony. He's uh, they just moved into their new location. I'm super excited for them. Flipside Music, Denver, Colorado. Oh, I wonder if he can get on. Ooh, that would be, ooh. Oh, hold on, y'all. I'm going to see if I can get Anthony to do this. Maybe he'll answer. We'll see. <laughs> Sophie Asmussen said, your wife and my mom are friends. Oh, awesome. The two dogs, how, okay, all right. Hey, buddy, there's Flipside Music in Denver, Colorado, home of the Flipside Blues. I was just talking about you, and Ike, you just messaged, so maybe I'll get Ike to jump on in here. That would be super fun. Uh, questions, hey, how's business? Business is really good. We are very busy teaching lessons. We have always built our business on teaching. From day one, 13 and a half years ago, we were teaching lessons, so that's good. Uh, the retail sales thing for us right now is a little slow. So things are a little slow, like on guitars and amps. We're, we are selling like strings and picks and capos and tuners and cables and all the accessory stuff, straps and things like that. We stay pretty busy with that. I stay pretty busy with restringing 
Uh, who's this guy? Hey, what's going on? Man? Hold on. I got uh, a lot of stuff going on here. Apparently so. Am I in? Can you see me? I cannot see you, but I can hear you. How about that? <laughs> now I can. Now I can hear you. What's up? What's going on? Let's finish. Let's move this thing around. So I've just done an hour and 24 minutes talking about my carnivore challenge. How's it going? How is that? It's been uh, freaking awesome. Like yesterday was day 60. Wow. Yeah. How much How much weight did you lose on that, bud? Uh, my little, my fancy scale that I got that uh, Greg from Vola told me to buy says I've lost like 21 pounds. So now, I it, uh, the recap is I lost like... I went from like 241 to 225 in about 26 days. Wow. Once I got to 225, now I was saying, so I did carnivore for 30 days, and then I decided I'm going to do 30 more days. We're going to make it 60 and see what happens. Now, on the next 30 days of carnivore, I started doing a push-up challenge. So I started doing push-ups every single day. And when I'm at the track, after doing my two miles, I've been going up and down the bleachers, <laughs> which is way harder than walking for two miles. Yeah, man, that's like you're getting after it. Yeah, so I thought, and I got a weighted vest. So when I'm walking, so I think what happened is the weight loss kind of stalled. But I think I started building muscle and still losing fat. So that's like, that's what I you look, do, though. Yeah. And I, there was a doctor that I watched. I was telling everybody, I probably watched about 100 hours of carnivore videos from doctors about what to do and what to expect and why it's good and all that crap. Mm hmm. And one guy said he lost about 25, 30 pounds the first month and then didn't lose any more weight, but he was super athletic. He started, he kept burning fat and he kept building muscle, but he was doing it at the exact same time. So his weight on the scale didn't change, but his measurements were changing and he was getting more muscular. So he's like, sometime you will lose weight initially. And some people keep losing weight for like months and months. Depends on how much you got to lose. And some people... Like if you're working out, lifting weights and being active, it's like you'll start building muscle and it kind of displaces it. So I think that's what happened. I think I've displaced. Now I am down to like 222 now. So I think I was like 241, 242. Now I'm down to like 222. So the weight loss has resumed. But it's definitely slower the next 30 days. Yeah, but, but still, that's pretty impressive. And that's good, though. It's still being healthier, so. I mean, and yeah, you get to steak and stuff all the time. Yeah. And like, I think, you know, I, my clothes are still fitting. Like I, I went out and bought a large T-shirt yesterday. I was like, wow. That's I, haven't worn a, I know. I was like, I haven't worn a large since college. I now, saw it was the other day when you, when you, uh, you know, final payment of the. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Vehicle, Cadillac. And I was like. Dude, looking slender, man. Looking slim. Yeah, I know. I, I sent that picture to Angela. She's like, babe, you look pretty good. And I'm like, do I? <laughs> yeah, yeah looking, I was looking slender. I was like, man, I'm a little jealous. I got to, uh, you know. You got to eat steak for 60 days. Are, yeah, it sounds like a terrible thing. Oh, man. I'm probably going to have one at night when I get home, even though it's really late. But all I've eaten today is a steak this morning and some, like, pork, pork rinds. Well, I'm not going to tell you what I had for for today. Oh, yeah. Psychologically, every now and then, I watched the we were watching the uh, Angela. She's been watching Bones in that old. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Doctor, so we, and you watch it on um, some streaming service where you have to watch commercials, right? Yeah, it's like Fever or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So we we're watch. She's watching it. I'm just kind of sitting there, like I remember this, and I started kind of watching it because she was watching it. And then a commercial for Reese's Take Five came on. Ooh. And it was like, I don't even like those. I like peanut butter cups, but I don't like Take Five. And they're like, comes up all sexy and the chocolate. Uh, like, how do we get the chocolate on the peanut butter and the thing and the thing? And I was just looking at that. And I was like, I want one. <laughs> like, like emotional. Like, I didn't, I wasn't hungry, but it was like, they're brainwashing us. It's great. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, I got a nephew who's 23 that I'm convinced that he's just like, you know, 
The new Double XL Baconator Extreme Extravaganza is now on for sale at Carl's Jr. Next thing you know, he's like, yeah, I tried one. Oh, man. Because yeah. he just, wow. like, I think he's susceptible to marketing. Yeah. You know, where I think after a while, you get a little bit, you know, you're like, okay, I get it. Um, but, you know, mm -hmm. chocolate's good. Like, if you're eating steak all the time, I'm sure you got cravings for chocolate and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Now, I did have the other day, I had some 100% cacao chocolate bar. Well, that's that fits in the thing? Uh, kind of. It depends on who you ask. Like I was saying earlier, like some people are like super like, okay, meat, salt, water. Like that's the most extreme version that some people do. Some people will do, eh, you can have a blueberry here and there. Some people are like, eh, you can have hand, you can have honey. It comes from an animal. It's bee throw up, but it came from an animal, kind of. So there yeah. are some, there are there are different camps of carnivores. And some are like, yeah, you can have dairy. And some are like, no dairy, right? It's it just depends, you know. Yeah. I'm kind of a dirty carnivore, I guess. So like I was telling them, I still make my giant mega blended coffee. It but it's got maybe three grams of carbs in it. So I'm like, well, I still have to have coffee. If I tried it, I would still have to have coffee. I, I think I think they all agree you can have black coffee. Like that's I mean, that's pretty hardcore though. I'm like, I don't know about that. Right. Well, oh, you can put, yeah, you, hang on one second, because I got food on the stove and it's you like, could have heavy cream. Ooh, heavy cream's good. I like that. Yeah, heavy cream in your coffee. Hey, you guys, thank you for hanging out. I appreciate this. I saw I can like, oh, we haven't had a live chat in a while, so I had to bring. Sorry, I got food. I just got home. I've been going, I don't know, maybe a month. I don't think I've taken a day off in like a month with the move. It's been, yeah. You know, well, I thought it's been insane, and I, it's been every day, and and we still have, you know, we got to find where to put stuff. Yeah. So. That's been a huge challenge because uh, we had a lot of people that helped us, which was awesome. Um, that was great. But there, you know, some stuff were like, where did that go? Where is this box? Where is that thing? You know, and we're still like trying to. It's amazing because this place, the place is bigger. And I'm sitting there going, we're already full. Like, like we already have stuff all over the warehouse. Now it needs to get organized. So we'll free up space. But it's, it's not big enough where we have, like, you know, like, FU space, I guess. Right. <laughs> like, exactly. you throw anything anywhere, and it's 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 okay. So we're, we got to, um, what do you call it? We got to, uh, you know, still organize it. But it's it's been, you know, the move itself was, was crazy. And then now it's the aftermath of yeah. trying to get everything organized so we could find it. So. Yeah. Cream does come from a cow. Big John. So you can have heavy cream on your diet. Yeah. Hey, Big John. What's happening? Yeah, I thought, well, well strap, John. We, we kind of, you know, we, John bought some stuff from us the other day and we didn't have the, the guitar strap. So, oh, we, no. Yeah, Dylan reached out. I was like, we either didn't have it or we couldn't find it. And that's been, we've had about three orders that we had to cancel because, um, because of, oh, if we're showing off guitars, then I might need a new, I might need a new strap. If we're showing off guitars, hey, that G and L? No, man, that's my. Oh, your Fender. That's my Fender Kingfish. Oh, oh yeah. This thing is just right. Noise. Yeah. You know, like I need more. Like I need more tellies. Right. Like I need more Schecters. Uh, I hear you. I've got like nine. <laughs> This one, I had to get this one back from Adam. You know, I sold this to Adam Lamar to get money to buy that Gibson Les Paul Standard. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he played it in Warefoot and he played it in Skate Nicks when he was on tour and stuff. And, of course, he told me when he bought it, he's like, hey, if you want to buy it back someday, you know, I'll, you got to sell it back to you. I'm like, okay, because I'm like, I just really wanted that Les Paul Standard. And then every time I would see a video that I made with this guitar or a picture, I was like, holy crap. It That's looks... A guitar, man. It... It photographs and videos really well. Well, like the, you're gonna need that for the ZZ Top thing. I know. That's what I thought. Cause I, I've been playing my I've been playing my Explorer at home, and I'm like, oh, I like this. I do not want to take it to a gig. Like my my Explorer, because it's like super sentimental value. If anything happened to it, I would be like, no, 
But this, I will take to a gig. And it's kind of, a, it looks like something Billy would play, maybe. Oh, absolutely it would be. I think that would be pretty rad. And so, I, and it's like, you know, it's like an $800 guitar. So, and now it's got wear foot dings on it. It's got like a little crack at the finish. And he's like, it's got some stuff on it. I kind of like, I'm like, it's fine. Yeah, Adam. Okay. I mean, just, you know, I expected it to have some stuff because he like literally played real gigs and toured with it. So, right. And, and, you know, I freaking loved Warefoot, so I'm like, it's kind of fun that it was, you know, it's you know, in the family, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he's got some other guitars he's gonna sell. I'm like, I want that one. If you really, he's like, he's not highly motivated to sell it, but he's not really gigging anymore. And he's gonna keep his tellies. He's gonna keep his tellies, but sell the other stuff. I'm like, which is smart. I guess so. <laughs> his all his pointy guitars. He's not like really gonna. I'm like, well, I want that one. So nice. I might get another one from him. He's kind of like he's on the fence about selling it. Like he, you know, he doesn't really play it. He likes it, but he's like, ah, I don't really need it. You know, I'm like, well, if you do really get, find yourself needing to sell it, I want it. Let me get it right. My his, whole, uh, yeah, see if you can get first dibs. Yeah, yeah. His um, his uh, his V is an Epiphone Brent Hines V, which is like a silver burst. Nice. I played it. You brought it here. I played. It. I was like, I like this. I, I haven't really that ever, one. Yeah, I, I haven't ever really found a. I always wanted a V, but I could never really find one that I just like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that one I played. I was like, ah, I like this one. So if he does sell it, I'll probably get it. Okay. Yeah, one of these days, I got to get me an Explorer. I've been looking at one of those. I don't know why, but I get in these routines of like looking at stuff that I don't need, and then. The guys, yeah. the guys at the shop bought me another Telecaster. So, uh, an early '70s Greco Tele walked in, and they're like, "Well, it needs a little work, but we we bought it because we're, you know, they're like we we got it cheap enough, so they're gonna make it into my Doomstick, so I can oh, nice. put it in, you know, drop C or something like that, and play some lower tune, uh, lower tuning stuff, because um, I don't have one. Right, have nine Telecasters, and none of them are in a drop. You don't have any doom casters. I have no doom casters. But I'm yeah, you know, I just got this from Adam last Saturday. And I've been playing the crap out of it since I got it. I'm like, ah, oh, thanks. I missed you, buddy. Thank you for coming back. And then last night I was watching some Metallica videos. Mm -hmm. and they, were, they were playing Blackened like a couple months ago, and it was really awesome. James sounds amazing, and he's playing a white V, and I'm like. That white V is pretty sexy. I wonder if I can find an Epiphone white V and make it look like James. So I started looking. I'm looking at freaking Guitar Center used. I'm like, oh my god, they have a used white V that's an Epiphone, but it's like, oh, like I, I'm not supposed to buy any guitars. I wasn't even supposed to buy this back from Adam, theoretically. I mean, I can't. I could, but I was like, it wasn't really in the budget, right? Necessarily. But well, here I am, four days later. You got a lot. I mean, there's some are, you know, I see the wall behind you. Yeah. I got I a few on the chopping block because um because there's I got a few at the store I got my eye on, and I'm like, I can't bring any more home. Yeah. If you know getting rid of some. So I got like two or three on the chopping block because I got a Reverend Pete Anderson telegaster. Yeah, yeah. And it's got the whammy on it, and it thing sounds freaking amazing and it plays amazing. And I was like, I gotta have that. And then this Ibanez Art Core, which isn't really a very expensive guitar. Right, but those are good. It comes in and I it's got a sexy top on it. And the neck is kind of fat and it plays really nice. It's got a cool tone. And I'm like, well, well, crap. So no, if you guys if you gotta sell one, do you take like some of yours from the house that you need to recycle to the store and put them up on the wall? I have done so, such things, yes. But some of them I just want to just sell on reverb on my own because... Right. Like a person to person. Yeah, and the thing is, is if I put it up in the store, which I could, certainly, but then I sell it through the store and I feel like it's store money and it's not my money, even though it is mine. Right, and I got you. If I sell it through reverb, then it's just my sale. Yes. And I don't have to worry about it. You know, it, there's, there's no going through the store. Right, right. Stuff. Right, that makes sense. I got you. 
So I, I do have a I do have a store. Um, you know, I, I do have another setting I could do for reverb for. That's not flip side. It's like yeah. Axe yeah. Guitar Garage. Yeah, like everybody, Ike's uh, Guitar Treehouse. <laughs> yeah, come over here. We got some sticks over there. We got some stuff over here. Come on. Yeah, I'm always nervous. Like I do go, I do go on reverb and look stuff. I mean, I don't sell stuff on reverb, which is stupid. I should probably, but the last time I did it, I got kind of like it wasn't, it wasn't an optimal transaction. You know, like it cost me so much in fees and all the stuff. And then the guy got the guitar. And he didn't want to return it, but he immediately the next day listed on Reverb for sale. So that, yeah, I, it could be a it could be a challenge. I mean, dude, honestly, the questions we get: Hey, is this thing blue? I don't know. The fourteen color the fourteen color pictures we had included with the listing right clearly shows it's blue. What are you asking me? What you know what, what I mean? Like it it we get honestly on a weekly basis the number of nonsense weird question yeah. is like it, after yeah. a while i'm like are these people effing with me yeah i just got savinity said reverb is never optimal <laughs> i just got tired of it personally and again we don't we don't sell like you sell and we so sell a lot on reverb though that's yeah the downfall yeah. is or the, the the con to it the, the positive is we sell a lot of stuff on reverb right the con also is we sell a lot of stuff on Reverb, but I'd rather sell it through our website or to our locals. So we're going to kind of modify how we do some of that stuff because I would much, honestly, I would much rather give the discount to a customer than give it to Reverb because F right. Reverb. Right, right. Well, same thing, you know, like I was saying earlier, and someone asked how business was. I'm like, ah, oh, it's all right for us. I mean, we, I'm as busier than ever teaching, which is our bread and butter for 13 years. Right. It's great. I make more money than we've ever made teaching, which is awesome. Um, and I sell at uh, cables, picks, capos, strings, you know, peg winders, like all the accessories, strap. I sell that crap every day. I don't sell guitars every day or amps every day. But my, it's just not a big town. You've been here. And I'm like, right. I, Greg's always on me like, you got to get on reverb. I'm like, I've been on reverb. And it like, it pissed me off. Like it wasn't for me. It wasn't. It was more stressful than it was worth it for me. Right, but and you got to set up a design our business differently, you know. And you got to set your stuff up different. Like you have to have shipping materials, shipping accounts. You got to go through all that. You got to, you know, people want returns. You got to have boxes. Like for us, we have all that stuff. Yeah. Um, so it's we we can do it, you know, because we set out like Mondays. We send out a good amount of stuff, but I'm starting to shift my idea. Going instead of me giving. You know, let's just pick a number and say instead of me giving a thousand dollars in fees to Reverb, I'd rather spend that thousand dollars in fees mm -hmm. and put it into Google AdWords or advertising or anything, and Local. then have customers come to my website, buy from us, that they could be part of our company, and then hopefully buy from us again, and they could be you know get on our email list or something to be part of the deals that we do, yeah. because. Everybody that buys off a of reverb and they tell you, oh, I got this off a of reverb. They yeah. never say who they bought it from. Right. They say, I bought this from Flipside right. Music. Yeah. Uh, they don't say Flipside oh. Music. They say reverb. Or I bought it on eBay. But it's always somebody else that sold it to them. So we want to kind of, you know, change stuff around. Uh, right. Sevently, 70. Savinity. What is it? I think it's Savinity. Okay. So I can't Seven see I can't see shit, man. I'm getting old. <laughs> uh, Savinity says ship station. That's what we use. Yeah. It does make things a lot easier for the amount of stuff that we do ship. So. Hey. Yeah. I didn't realize that I got, I got a pre-order special shirt. You did? Yes. When I got my seven string from Flipside. You were, nobody else had one. You were like, well, you might have been the second one, I think. I ordered directly from uh, Flipside's website. I didn't go to Reverb. I troll your site every now and then because you had you had a Les Paul, uh, a Les Paul Studio Black, a while back. It's been a while back, and I was looking at it. I was like, eight hundred dollars. Oh I kinda, yeah, I remember that one. That was a nice one. I was like, I kind of want a Les Paul Studio. Oh man, I have a friend who has an older one. 
and he stripped the back and the neck. He used like mineral spirits or something. Mm. Stripped it back, bare wood on the back, kind of like a CMG. And then he did a little bit of a reveal binding on the top with like, you know, like taped it off and then used uh, whatever the spirit. Yeah, like, a, like a faux binding? Yeah, it's just like how uh, how CMG does it with like the reveal, the maple cap, and it was just a black top, and it had you know some cracks in the top from the you know not crack cracks, but you know what I'm talking about the yeah. hot old cracks that Gibsons get, and the neck he just oiled the neck and oiled the body, and I was like played, I was like holy crap, this guitar is awesome, and it was like a studio like from the 90s or something, but it was the stripped back and the stripped neck, and then the reveal the reveal binding thing, and I was like. This is and it played awesome. And I thought that would be cool to do. Like he's not a professional work guitar working guy, but you you can strip that pot that uh, nitro off pretty easily. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, it's like hey, guitars don't have to be expensive to be good. Uh -uh. You know, not necessarily. I got we got one in the shop right now that's kind of dangerous. I got a 1974 Telecaster Deluxe, and you know the song. Um, How's it go? How much is it? What, what, hang on. So there's a guy, you remember the, you know the song Wildfire from the 70s? Yeah. And they called it Wild. You know, that song? I can't sing it because clearly I can't get number one of falsetto. And that note is nowhere in a range that I can get to. Right. But it's that guy's guitar. So the guy oh. we got it from got it from that guy. So that song "Wildfire" might have been written on that. Not that anybody gives a hoot, right? You know, currently there's no kid that's like, "Oh, I have to have the Wildfire guitar," right? But yeah, he's looking for like near five for it. Oh, okay. And I'm like, uh, I'm sitting there going, "I played it," and I go, ah, "I want it." But yeah, I, that's I, it's cute. it's way way outside of my budget. Yeah, that's 1975 Les Paul custom money for me. So, yeah, you take a zero off it, we might be talking. Yeah, if I had five grand, but yeah, Savinity said I said it correctly. So, Savinity. Nice. Savinity, not seven itty. <laughs> seven fifty. Seven fifty. That's why they keep coming around here. <laughs> seven fifty. <laughs> seven fifty. Nice. Well, it's I saw you're on. I was like, oh, I'm talking. And I'm like, oh, I just messaged him. He's like, how? Oh. I wanted to bring you on and ask, like, because I've been watching on Instagram. Who runs your Instagram? Is it you or is it Dylan or is it all the guys? Or who does? So I jump in every now and again, but I got my my boy Jake, uh, who does it for it. It was just one of those things, like I got to take things off my plate. Um, but I kind of give direction on, hey, I'd like to see some more of this or some more of that, um, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I just let Jake do his thing because he's got a good eye. You know, and he knows how to work a camera and he, and he does a good job. And he also does all he's also our graphic guy. So he does oh. all your graphics. Well, I try to like every single time I see one on Instagram. I like it. So I didn't know. I, was like, I hope I see that I like his pictures. I, 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 see, I appreciate it, man. I, I look through stuff. I, you know, this week I might be behind on a bunch of shit. Oop, sorry. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's fine. I went this long. It's YouTube. That's pretty good. This long without swearing. That was pretty good. I might have said ass earlier, which is like okay. Well, you know me. I'm usually yeah. Why not? Yeah, I'm usually. Hey, not. <laughs> uh, it's George from formerly Beaumont Guitars. Ah, so what happened to Beaumont? I remember George. Yeah. Yeah, I did too. He, not he, there, or are they still there? You're not I, there, or did they go away? Yeah. Or what I remember George. He he he, taught, he mentioned something the other day. I was like, Fred George, I remember you, George. And I was like, I know who you are. And it's like uh, he's great. I saw a thing. I thought I saw a thing on Facebook that Beaumont Guitars changed their name to something else. Like it was something else now. So I don't. But I haven't been, asked anybody. Yeah, because it's been a while since I talked to the dudes over there. Yeah, it's been a long time. Well, yeah, we hung out at Nam 2016, is what he was saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I've always. You know, it. So I, I see their stuff. Oh, they sold it to someone else. He said, oh, "Okay." It's been uh, selling it's been, to it's someone been else years. So selling can... to someone else is better than closing. Yeah, some stores we know just closed. 
Yeah, they just up and decided not to do things anymore after they, they couldn't, couldn't make any money with their English. They daddy. couldn't handle it. When they, they couldn't, just, could, they couldn't make any more money with their English daddy. They they decided to just close up shop. Uh, <laughs> I, that tickles me so much. Well, it tickles me because I'm just like I just moved into a new building, so yeah. All right, get it up in you in the neck. <laughs> In the neck. Would you like a cookie with that? Yeah, right, right in the neck. You should start sending out uh, something with your stuff, and you should name it something. That would be funny. <laughs> Ike's house of cookies. <laughs> oh, the meatball thing. Oh, it was funny because we went to the NAM show, and uh, you know, our buddy was there with his new lineup of stuff, and the guy I went with was like hanging out with him a little bit. And I'm like, oh, yeah. like you know, maybe have, you know, have a conversation. I'm like, F no, you know, right. I guess I'm like, you don't know how Italians work, do you? Right. No. There's no going back. All those boats have been burned at the shore. Sorry. We don't, I don't, I don't go back. Yeah. No. Not good. They said, uh, Harry still does the repairs. I think I'm pretty sure I see, I see photos. Cause Harry's the big, uh, Metallica fan. He's got like all of like the James Hetfield guitars and stuff. And yeah, COVID was kind of rough and all that stuff. Oh, Ike yeah. has hot sauce he includes from time to time. What's the name of your hot sauce? Wait, what what, what happened? Terry said Ike has hot sauce he includes from time to time. Yeah, so we got the demon spit. Ah. Uh. So I need to, because of all the stuff with the move and everything. Um I'm behind on a lot of stuff. I'm I'm stretched so thin that you it's... call it riffity spit. What's that? You should call it riffity spit. Riff, riffity spit. Riffity spit in your face. But uh, I've been so busy and crazy. But I got I you know we're gonna bring back that. I got to go to the hot sauce shop and get them to do some new bottles. We got some new koozies. We got some new giveaway things. We're gonna do the kazoo's again. Um, so we just need to get back uh, in on track because yeah. this thing being drawn out so long from the city has depleted our resources for extra fun things. So uh, now that we're moved, right. you know, um, now that we're moved into the new place, you know, I'm still buying stuff, but the the expenses, you know, I, I'm not carrying a mortgage and a rent. I'm not paying for expenses in two places. So that's going to be, yes, that'll free up some budget for some fun bits. Terry said, Ike's mama's pasta sauce. Do it. Yeah. Hey, yeah. How hard is it? How hard is it? Uh, it's probably really hard to manufacture pasta sauce on a large scale level and ship it. You'd have to have somebody else do it. Right. You have to farm yeah. it out. But you also have to get it all FDA approved. So not only do you have to do it, you have to send it to a company that has to approve it and do all the thing. And that costs like two grand. Uh, so because like hot sauce, I wanted to do it. And I asked the hot sauce guy, if I wanted to make my own hot sauce, what would I have to do? And he said, you got to go. We would go through the list. We would do it, all the stuff. But then it has to get approved. And it costs about fifteen hundred to two thousand. Mm. And I'm like, OK, we're going to hold off on that and use your hot sauce for a while. Right there you go. Until we can have such things. George said, I really wanted to tell you guys I was new to the industry and you were both so nice to me. I really appreciate how kind and accepting of me you guys are. Oh man. Well, I was like, you you're like us. Yeah, you're just one of us, you're man. Us, you know, you yeah, guys George, you're just one of us, man. You're just a dude that does this stuff because we love it. And yeah. I've got know. I've got friends, obviously, you know, you know, we're friends. For a long time now. I mean, you're in Denver. I'm in Texas. We are not competing. We're not even competing online. It's not a competition. But I have a store, you know, 35, 40 minutes away that I freaking love those guys. And like, I send people to them all the time because they do stuff I don't do and they have things that I don't have. I'm like, go see this guy because they're freaking awesome. And there's another store 30 minutes away. I don't even tell people's there. I'm like, what's the closest store? These guys 40 minutes away. If I don't have it, go to those guys. Because those guys over there are a bunch of a-holes. I got a I situation like that, too. Yeah. So it's like, but, you know, it's like, I had a, this is crazy. I had a guy pop in the store last week who opened a store in Louisiana. 
And he just happened to be in town, like going to Dallas because his son lives in this area and does like pro audio stuff. And he came in as like, hey, Ryan, my name's Steve. We have a store. It's Cardinal Music in to something, Louisiana. I forgot. Stonewall, Louisiana. Yeah. Stonewall. And he's like, I just want to say I want to come in to see you. Like I watched your video on how to open a music store a couple of years ago. And, you know, it was really encouraging. And you said this and Angela said this and this and this. And like, so now we're doing, he's like, a, he's about to retire fireman guy. So he's like about to retire from 20 years of the fire department and do this thing. And I'm like, wow, dude. And like, they sell PRSs and like, they have more funding than I have, but it's like, you know, but he was like, we kind of inspired him to like, I got, I'm sure they were thinking about it for a while, but then we right. kind of maybe we, our, our story maybe helped nudge them into taking the leap, you know? And I was like, I've had more than one person call me and say, Hey, you did a video back then about this is how you opened a store and how you did it. And, you know, like, so we wanted to try it. I'm like, that's crazy. Number one. And that's also super awesome. And, you know, what's the worst that can happen is you fail and then you go get some crap drop. I mean, you, that's, can fail, you can fail at doing something you don't want to do. Right. Just as much as you can fail at doing something you want to do. So why don't you take the chance of doing something you want to do? Yeah. Because because the time keeps rolling. Yeah. You do something that don't work out, do something else. Just uh, yeah. pick yourself up. I worked for it. Yeah, we, 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 <laughs> we lived in Tulsa. I worked for a company there and my boss, the store manager, him and his wife had their own business. They had a resale shop, like in another suburb where, you know, they buy used clothes and sell used clothes. And they they had that business forever. He just worked for this company because they had insurance and he didn't make really good money because he was a good salesman. But we were talking about this and uh, I eventually left that when we moved back to Texas and I talked to him later on and said, you know, the economy went to crap and then the company came in and was like firing people. Firing store managers that have been with the company for 20 years because like, well, numbers are down. And he's like, you know, I've I've given 13 years of my life to this company, like eat, breathe and sleep. And they're just like, F off, you're gone. And he's like, and I was like, if you're going to. And he said this one time, he's like, you, he's like, do you know that we spend more time together than you and your wife do? You know, you spend more time at work with the, these guys around us. Then maybe you do with your kids or your spouse, you know, because by the time you get home, it's time to go to bed, there's sleep, and you work. Right. He's like, we, we spend more of our life with this working for this company than we do for ourselves. And like, they don't give a crap about us. So it's like, hmm, you know what? I thought, you know what? Why not work for myself? Now, when he eventually just, the company laid everybody off, he just, well, fine. I have another, he just went back to his business and worked with his wife. Mm-hmm. But I was like, you know, they don't give a crap about me. They could walk in here tomorrow and go, hey, you're gone. After all the emotion and energy and you're trying to build up this store and be customer service and like take care of customers and build this rapport in the community and like, and they don't give a crap about you. It's like, well, I could do that for me. That's, that's how I felt when I worked in the restaurants and bars, I used to, you know, gung ho, get, get done, do the things, work hard, work a lot of hours. Mm. And you know, that when I was younger, I was, I was more foolish. Yeah. And I thought that they actually meant what they said. And then it doesn't come through. And then you try hard and you think it's you and you keep going. And then there's a manager that's above you. That's to dip shit. And you start to realize some things that it's not about how much you work. It's about how much no, how much ass you kiss. Yep. And, and that, and then after a while you just, you know, I realized for me in the restaurant and bars, I'm like, I'm not going to get anywhere near where I want to be. If I have somebody else holding the glass ceiling above me. Yeah, and, and if I'm going to work this hard, because I always work hard, that's just how I am. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, like I said, when I got on, I'm like, I have a day off in a month, and I've been working ten hour days with this move and everything. Yeah, you know, for, for a week now, and it, and but I'm and tomorrow I'm going in until we get to a spot where I can lay lay off a bit. But the thing is, is that I got to a point where I'm like, if I'm going to work hard, and I'm going to work this hard. I'm going to do it for me and then I can set the company up the way I want it. And I can treat the people that work for me. If we get to that point, the way I want to to be treated or the way I've always wanted to be treated. Cause I take care of my guys. I do the best I can to take care of them financially. Yep. Also I'm, I'm not, you know, you know, Hey, uh, I need the TPS reports by two o'clock on Tuesday. Otherwise your job is in jeopardy. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got guys that are in bands and they take they go for a week and a half or two weeks 
and go out on tour. And, mm-hmm. and I'm like, whatever I take you, Sam, my tech, you know, I'm like, dude, take Friday off. Well, oh, I don't want to lose the hours. No, 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 no. Take Friday off. I'm telling you it's paid. We're doing good. Fine. Everything's fine. So you know, even Dylan once a month, take an extra day off a week, take an extra day off, get a three day weekend, get yourself right. Same thing with Sam. Take an extra day off this month. You know, get yourself like a, like a mental health day. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's just just go get drunk day if you want. I don't give a shit. Right. You know, it's like go do something so you can take your have an extra day. I don't really do that much, but I'm I don't know, I'm built different. Right. And I think because of all the years that I worked so hard and so long in the restaurant business, I just got used to it. Now, yeah. granted, I need a break. Yeah. And in the future, I'm going to do, I'm going to try to do better at that. Um, but like when we have to, we just, just grind, just grind. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was, you know, Gary V. Somebody else's shit. Right. I remember, I remember Gary talking about this. I don't listen to a bunch of Gary stuff as much anymore, but I used to. And he would, people would ask him, was like, well, how do I get employees who care as much as I do about my business? And he's like, you're not going to. You're never going to. No employee is, is ever going to care about what you do. And you can't expect them to work the way you do. You mm-hmm. can't ever, and you can't get mad at them if they don't. You want, you'd love to have people that work as hard as you do, but they're not, they're not going to because it's not theirs. Right. But like for, for me, I got Dylan and Dylan's been working through his days off and, you know, he's a salary guy. And so he's going to get the same, but, you know, I take care of Dylan where I can and I've always come through with him in the long run. And someday if we ever sell this business or whatever, you know, Mm-hmm. He'll get uh, the the makeup. Something, yeah. He's, he'll get some makeup dough. Yeah, I think because I, you know, people always say that like if you find a job you love, you'll never work a day in your life. I'm like, that is a lie. I was like, I love what I do, but I work way harder now than I ever have. I work way harder for me than I have for anybody else. Oh, me too. The, the difference is, it's satisfying. I'm not going to say it's not hard work, but it's rewarding. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, I feel you much better about my efforts because it's mine. You know, yeah. it's, it's my stuff. I'm working hard now. You know, I put pressure on myself because I got, you know, dudes that I got to make sure that we can pay them. And that that weighs on me. You know, yeah. I'm going to make sure that I, that we all – I'm a very firm believer that all boats rise. And if you mm-hmm. guys help me and work hard and we make this grow, we're all going to do good. You know, we're all do very well. And, you know, be careful if we ever blow up and just have stupid money because we're going to have stupid shit. (laughs) Like, I want to keep it small so we all can make money. I want to put a spaceship on the top of my building. You know, I want to drive around in a van that's got fur on it. Like, yeah, we would be the silliest place in town if if we had shit water money. Right. (laughs) You know what I mean? We'd be silly. Yeah, which would probably be great because most people are not silly enough. Some people take themselves way too serious. Yeah, I don't. You know, I'm just some guy who works hard and doesn't want to get a real job that gets to sell cool things to people um, that get to go out and do other cool things. You know, so we're in a really cool industry, you know, in regards to that. Yeah, let's see. Terry said, being an influencer on social media may not pay well at times, but the best pay is thanks from people you have inspired or helped by being how you are online. Yeah, well, it's like the guy coming in and saying like, hey, I wanted to come meet you. I've watched a bunch of your videos. Like, I don't know who this guy is. But he's watched a ton of our stuff. And he's like, hey, you inspired me to do this. And I'm like, I had a student today. She's an adult. You know, she's like older than me. And she's like taking piano lessons. And she's kind of in and out. She's busy and it's life and stuff. She's like, I'm so sorry I wasn't here. I'm like, you're an adult. You get a pass. You got You got stuff to do. But she's like, I was watching your Facebook thing and you talked about like I was walking or something or I was eating right or I was like, you know, paying off my car. Like, you know, kind of, she's like, I just want to say like, all oh, your posts are really inspiring. I'm like, oh, really? OK. I was like, thank you. That's really nice. It's kind of weird. And I'm like, she's like, no, like I started getting I started drinking, you know, no real sodas. And I was trying trying to walk more and stuff. And I was like, you just really motivated me to like do this other stuff. And I've got a, a few other friends from high school. I messaged was like, hey, I went for a walk today, too. I'm like. Awesome. Good. I'm like, but I don't, it's kind of humbling, but it's also like, I can't believe anybody's paying attention. Cause I'm more like, 
That's why I like pay attention. I mean, I've seen what you've done. I'm inspired to walk. I haven't started it yet, but I'm inspired. <laughs> Don't you live down the street from a park? I do. Like, I got one right here. Like right, right a block away. You got a little walking track. Well, I just think it's I funny. I was on her. A lot in the store. That's true. That's a right. lot. And the new place is is longer. So yeah. there's a lot more walking from the front to the back to the front to the back. But what's cool is there's a, a bike trail right up here. Oh yeah. The bike trail goes. It's nine miles south, right to the shop. Really? Literally dumps me out right in front of. Well, not right in front of the shop, but. Maybe 200, 300 yards south of the shop. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to start doing that to get uh, burn off a little, you know. I got I got to get my 20 LBs off to start looking, you know, a little bit yeah. better. I, I got to younger. So I got to fix my bike. When I was riding my bike, I had a blast riding it. Like walking, I just do it because I'm like, well, I don't want to die at 50 from a heart attack. So I got to do something. So yeah. it's just, I just do it because it's doable. It's not freaking CrossFit or being a psychopath or doing something stupid. It's like, it's just walking. Greg was like, bro, it's not like you're going to the moon. You're just walking. I'm like, yeah, but I'm walking every day. And even while I'm injured, Greg. Yeah. And it's, but the it's thing is, is that walking is, a, is lower impact, but it makes a difference. Because how come all of a sudden once you see these old guys that had a heart attack at 62, and next thing you know, they're scooting around their damn neighborhood. Well, it's because the doctor said, maybe get off your old ass. And move, go around the block. Yeah. You know, so for me, I like to ride my bike because I like to get moving. But, yeah, yeah I, could, I could literally walk down the street, walk around that little lake there a couple, two, three times, and that's a good start. Now, I, I really do need to start to do that. But because I'll tell you what, with this move and me lifting slat walls and putting things up, crap, throwing shit in the truck. Yeah. I think I'm sore in areas that haven't been sore in quite a while. Yeah. There you go. Picking up stuff. Well, when I, I got to fix my bike because I keep having flat tires. I'm not sure why. And I got to buy a new something. But I, when I was riding it. Maybe there's a burr in the saddle. I don't know. I, I tried. I looked. I was like, maybe there's a, something in the wheel. And I tried sanding it. And I'm like, I can't figure it out. But I was walking. And then I would go ride my bike. I get home from work. I got a little headlight and like a tail light on my bike. And I was like. Like it was the funnest crap. Like I was having a blast doing it. And it was way harder. My heart rate was way higher riding the bike. Oh yeah, you got hills and it's like, geez. I but, bought. Um, I love my my regular bike, but I did buy an e bike. Oh yeah, because but I bought one that because so they're doing rebates here in Colorado for e bikes, mm -hmm. and they'll send you like three, four, five hundred bucks depending on the bike. So, but the thing is, some of these e bikes got throttles, man. Oh really? Yeah. Well, I don't. I'm not trying to get on the e bike with a throttle. That's like a that's just an electric motorcycle, right? It's not, it's not a bike. So what I did is I made sure I got an e bike that has it's a pedal assist, right? So you have to engage in the action of riding the bike, but I get a little bit of extra boost because you know if I'm trying to get we live in Colorado, so there are some areas that are quite steep. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, nine yeah. miles if riding nine miles to work, no problem. Then working all day and trying to ride nine miles home, which is actually yeah. uphill, oh. may not be the easiest. So I was like, let me get the e-bike. That way I'm still getting exercise. But when you, you have know, a little nudge on the way home. Yeah. Well, if I'm getting a little tired on the way home, I got some assist because if it was. I think that's fair. You know, if I was going uphill to get to work and then downhill to get home different story right that uphill nine months it's not a huge incline but it's it's enough that you're working harder going back up and i don't know that at the end of a long day that that's going to be something i'm going to want to really go oh yeah yeah this is great right so are y'all going to have a, like an official grand opening party guitar barbecue thing so i think we're going to do maybe the first week of september I think that, that's that's like six weeks. September. Think, yeah, first week of September. September. Ooh. September. Oh, September. I was like September. Yeah. Maybe be September. September and bar guitar barbecue. Just no Bud Light. What's that? 
There's no Bud Light. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Anybody can drink whatever beer they want. Whatever they want. Whatever makes you happy. Whatever they want to do. I don't. We don't care. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was thinking. Um, oh, sheesh! Look who look who popped in. Don't Robert, let anybody in her. Ike's giving away free guitars for the first five hundred customers. Oh, yeah, I, I was. I walked in the door five hundred times myself. What's that? I said I walked in the door five hundred times myself. Yeah, That's where's the other? He said uh, you're giving away free guitars. Oh. Uh. I wish I could. If I win the lotto, if I won three hundred and fifty billion dollars or whatever the current lotto is, I'll give away five hundred. I'll give away five hundred dollar guitars. I don't know if it's Texas. Five hundred guitars. I don't know if it's Texas or like um, a national thing, but like the Texas lottery is like a billion dollars. It's like nine hundred million dollars or something. Yeah, ours out here is pretty uh, pretty heavy. I saw a thing that it was like it's almost a billion dollars. I'm like. Maybe I should play. I don't know. What would you do with eight hundred million dollars? You put a rocket ship on your on building. The house. Yeah. <laughs> if I had that kind of money, I wouldn't have the building. Or I'd just make the building my house and be like, everybody out. Right. I'm gonna oh, make this shit. my house. It says oh, you have I to see. be in California to win Powerball. Huh. I saw a thing. It's I guess Texas. It's in the Texas media. Like, I'll go buy a Powerball ticket. I'm like. Uh, I've never win, but you can't win if you don't play. Listen, man, throw five bucks at it. You never know. Yeah. Do the quick pick. Let it do its thing. You never know. Somebody's going to win. Eventually. Let's see. I'm trying to see if, if I missed any. Would I, uh, would I buy Steve his own house? I Yeah, sure. Oh man, I never play. I never play. I, I every now and then, like if it gets really high, I'll buy like one ticket and not win. So. I'll, I'll throw five bucks at it, or maybe ten bucks, and just try. Because you never know. Because you got to remember, you might win like a hundred or two hundred thousand bucks. That's true. You don't have to win the mega thing. You can just win a small thing. You might win a small. Th Hang on one second. I gotta check this stuff. So I am. Savinity said a California person won the Powerball. Oh, okay. See, I don't even pay attention. I just, um, I saw it. I'm like, oh, it's really big. Maybe I should buy one. But one billion, one billion dollars. That's a lot of money. I wouldn't know what to do with all that. Probably. I, I know what I'd do. I would buy all the guitars. I would buy all of the guitars. And then sell them. There you go. Buy a brewery and some guitars. Or a guitar company. I know what we could buy, buy with a billion dollars. <laughs> right? Burn it to the fucking ground. <laughs> Set them all on fire. <laughs> I know a company we could buy for a billion dollars or way less than a billion dollars, and we could just burn them all. I think we should just start one with a similar name. Yeah, and, and then just give them up. away. Yeah. Except make them good. Except make them good. Make them so you could actually to so you could actually intonate them. Yeah. Hey, listen. There was at least three or four that were that were good. I mean, we we did the best we could with those. Yeah, they're all right. It was all right. We did the best we could. We, did, you know, at this point, it's like yeah, whatever. It's all it's all learning experiences. You probably understand this. I'm sure you do. I don't know if I'm just getting old. I was telling someone the other day, I don't know what happened in my 40s, but now, like, every time something happens, I look at everything as a learning experience, like, good or bad. So, like, even when, like, bad stuff happens or, like, something goes sideways in business or something doesn't turn out right, I'm always like, huh, well, what can I learn from this? Don't do that again. Okay. All right. Well, let's move on, you know. So, like, I, I get less pissed, I think, and more, oh, like, more like, huh? All right. Note to self: If this situation happens again, don't do this, or don't don't work with that company, or don't buy something from that guy, or don't buy that product, or you know. I'm a little I try to do. At this yeah. Point. 
You know, like that was a that experience was, you know, it wasn't great, but it was also it also was very good learning experience. And you know, along the way, I've made some bad decisions with brands that I thought we we're going to do well with, and then yeah. they turned out to be dodgy, or you know, they they snatched the thing out from us because they wanted the other big company in town to carry their shit. And I'm like, wow, that was really crap. And now you're out of business. So, oh, okay. You know, so I've learned some things along the way, learned when to push a little bit and learned when to go, mm, yeah, well, F you. Yeah. You know, don't, don't call me again when, when it goes bad over there. Um, Cause I got a couple companies like that where I'm like, you know what? I don't think you've treated us fair. But if you, you know, don't come sniffing around or don't have your next salesman come sniffing around um, because I'm not going to be interested. There's plenty of other gear and cool gear to sell. So and it's happened. You know? Well, even a better conversation was, like, hey, you remember two years ago, you didn't want to work with me and you want to work with those guys? Why are you calling me now? Yeah. Well, because I didn't want to talk you. You know, you had a chance two years ago. So sorry. We've had that. Oh, well, we see what you guys are doing in Denver. Well, yeah. Well, I called you before. You're the same guy I talked to. I didn't forget that. So I don't right. think we're going to be – I don't think so. We're good. Oh, well, it's yeah. a great opportunity. It was a good opportunity two years ago, too. You didn't see it. And I'm yep. supposed to see it now? Sorry. Not saying that we're not – hey, listen, I'll double back on some shit if it, if it feels like it's the right thing to do. But, right. you know, if it it's good for the company, then, yes, I think I would do it. But, but there are some of these people that – they think they're there's something that they're not. So mm -hmm. you're like, all right, if that's the way you think, then we're not gonna it, you you may not jive with the way I do things. Yeah. Know? This is not a good fit. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for calling. <laughs> yep. I mean I've I've had some struggles because you know my situation. We got we're really good friends with a lot of the other stores in town. Yeah. You know, we were in the same thing like you were saying earlier. You know, we send people over to here, send people over there because that's what they specialize in or that's what they do or or that's a thing. Um, but we've gotten blocked for stuff for no reason. And it's like, man, we're not even close. So right. so it's like, you know, or I've been straight up lied to. Well, I had a company right. that straight up lied to me and said, we're not opening up dealers. And I said, OK, you know, because of the pandemic. I said, OK, right. well, I'll check back at another time. Literally called him a year later to the week and said, hey, man, still interested. Um, you know, can we can we have a conversation? Oh, sorry, man, we're still not opening anybody up. And I'm like, man, it's been quite a while All since right. this thing has been over. Since it's been over. And uh, that seems odd. So I go to the NAMM show. And I walk in the first door I walk into. Big old booth. And I go, oh. Uh. Why on the name? So I go, hmm. If y'all ain't open anybody up, what's all this dog and pony shit for? Yeah. You know, so I walk right over to the podium where a guy's work and I go, hey man, you work here? Yeah. I go, you guys opening dealers? And he goes, What? I go, you guys opening new dealers? Oh yeah, we're totally opening new dealers. Oh, great. Is so and so here? Because he told me that we aren't opening dealers. And I'd like to find out what the real story is, because I don't like this bullshit. And, he, and you could see the dude was like, ah, uh, he's in a meeting right now. And then I saw him like, you know, yeah, look at my name badge. Yeah, yeah. So I go, all right, cool, thanks. And I walk away and I send an email right to the dude. Hey, man, I'd like to talk to you. I'm here at the show. Right. And I just talked to somebody up front. So I had a chance to talk to him the next day. Um, and, you know, I, I, I talked to him and he turned, the, the rep was a nice guy. I don't think his approach was good. He shouldn't have lied to me. That was bullshit. Um, and then we talked, but we're 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 having issues because of some other thing, another company. You know, uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. So, but and then we're trying to still, you know, work a thing. But it's like, dude, just you know, why can't people just be, you know, cool? Like, I don't understand right. why some companies got to do stuff like that. So, anyway, I don't know where I was going with all that shit. Yeah, I don't know. That's I got you. Cool. It's, the, it's the, the lessons learned, you know? And, like, yeah. So, and when a situation comes up, a new situation, so it's a different company or a new person, but like, I've been here before. Right. Well, that's kind of where I was going. Sorry, I got sidetracked. It's been yeah. a long time. <laughs> mm hmm. So, yeah. you're thinking 
Or let a man go, oh, I've been, I've, I've heard this story before, you mm-hmm. know, so maybe I got to watch out. So you said like first weekend in September? Yeah, I think what we're going to do is try to do the first weekend in September to do a good barbecue. I got a friend of mine, Jim Jam Jimmy, who is a top notch barbecue guy. Um, so like Labor Day is the fourth. Are you thinking like one, two, three, four? Or? Possibly. I didn't even think about that, that it was Labor Day weekend. Because we usually do pretty good on Labor Day weekend, and then we can have a big sale. Maybe that, maybe that'll coordinate. Yeah, because I think day extravaganza, everything's on sale. Sale. Yeah, the first is a Friday, second Saturday. Labor Day is the fourth on Monday. So one, two, three, four. Maybe we do it on the Sunday before Labor Day. Yeah, and have the guitar barbecue. So we got to talk. See if you want to come out, Baker. If you're still in here, man. If you want to come out. You know, we try to get you out of Nashville for a weekend. Yeah, Denver's way cooler than Nashville. That's where that's like YouTuber Central now. It's Mecca now. It's Isn't the YouTube weird? Mecca down in Nash down in Nashville. All, all, a lot of the guys that I watch are down there. Yeah, well, I know Robert's there, and a couple of other guys are there. Well, I think Corey Coniglio, Papa Stash guy. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, you know, well, some of the other guys that are YouTubers, but also uh, oh, uh, that are more touring artists, too. But yeah, think, yeah, yeah. Is Marty Schwartz there now, too? I don't know. I know. Uh, what's his face? Tyler is there. Yeah. So there's a bunch of dudes that are that are the YouTube guys that I, that I kind of watch, too. Uh, that are Oh, Rhett Scholl. He's down yeah, there, yeah, too, yeah. I believe. No more permits. As long as you have to get a permit for the barbecue. I ain't get I ain't getting a permit for shit. I don't care. They can you know I, don't, I don't care. I'm not getting permits for anything. We're just gonna it's private property. Right? That's you know what's great about it's private really, property. Really small towns is like permit. Let me talk about a permit. <laughs> so listen to this nonsense. Don't the, even go ask. I just the, do stuff. The guy. The, the guy that the zoning guy, I was talking to him because he's like, well, well, I don't see a permit for that sign. I go, well, it's not any, it's no bigger than the last sign. It's the same material. And, and he goes, if that was a square sign and you decided to put up a round sign, you'd have to get a permit. And I go, for real? And he goes, yeah. If you just change that sign, same material, same size from round to square, you have to get a permit. And I, and I was like, man, you guys are unbelievable. And he was like, he goes, it's just the way it is. I'm sorry. Right? Yeah, it's re- it's kind of ridiculous, man. Huh. That's, that's baffling to me. Yeah, I like, I don't know if I should have got permits for stuff. Like, I've done all kinds of stuff here. I'm like, I want to knock this wall down and move this thing and do this whatever. And I just did it. I'm like, never asked. But... It's a really small town. There might be like one guy for like the whole freaking county to do stuff. And it's like, that. Nah. But they don't give a crap. I mean, honestly, they don't even really give a crap. I've had like the fire department come here one time in 13 years. Like, hey, yeah, we got to you gotta. Oh, you need to have a lit exit sign above the door. I was like, well, that's the only door. I think everybody knows that's the exit. I was like, okay. So that's I the that's where they got in here. Yeah. I was like, I can just put an exit sign up there. He's like, yeah, well, it's got to be lit though. I'm like. Okay, so I can just tape it to a, a, a lamp. They're like, yeah, that'll be fine. I mean, they were super nice guys. It's like, you know, the fire department is like, oh, you need some fire extinguishers. I'm like, well, I got one in here. I'm like, well, that one's old. Can I just go down to Walmart, buy one? It's like, yeah, that'll be fine. <laughs> like, okay, just do this, this, and it. I'm like, all right, I'll take care of it. And we'll be back someday. Like, they've never come back. That was like six years ago. I'm like, all right. Now, if that was Denver, they'd make you whole, cut a hole in the back because you need a second end. You need a second. Uh, way of egress. Yeah. Now, I think, though, we're kind of on that. You've been here, right? Yeah. It's like our building is just a long gray stucco building. I don't even really have a big sign outside. Right. It just says r and Music on the glass door. Like, that's it. So we're kind of incognito in a way. I, I still have people come in like, oh, hey, I drive past this all the time. I'm just wondering what it is. It's like, how long have you been here? 13 years. Oh, wow. Never, like, well, you know, here we are. <laughs> so maybe... Nobody knows we're here. 
It's possible. We hey, we've been we get people in the store and they're like, oh wow, like the old shop before we moved. Oh wow, did you guys just open up? We're like, and I go, yeah, like ten years ago. And they're like, what? You've been here for ten years. I go, yeah. How do I not know about it? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. know. What you do. I don't know what you do. Yeah, have you have you tried googling Denver Guitar Store? But it's funny because we'll get people in. I've got how long have you been here? 10 years, man. And they're like, I didn't know. And I go, Well, you knew you do now, so that's cool. I'm glad you know now. Um, but now at the new store, it's it'll be it's weird that because we've just been open this week and we're getting new people in, and we're like, I don't how is this? What's what what is it? What's happening? So I don't know how they're finding us or whatever, but I'm glad for it. So yeah, well, new location. I mean, like the pictures look tight. It looks like it looks awesome. I mean, it looks just almost like too fancy for us. It feels like we gotta we gotta dankify it up a little bit. But yeah, you gotta you gotta spill some beer on the carpet and throw some monkeys on the wall or something. I don't know. Well, we got we we gotta get the sticker pole and the sticker metal. We got some I beams that show, and I'm like, the, the plan is to just get everybody to send us stickers, so we could put it on our put it on the pole, put it on the stuff, and start to dankify a little bit. I we got to, I'll send you some stickers. Yeah, send me some stickers, man. I'll I'll put it on there. I think I got one. I think I got an old RNA on there already. I think I found one in a drawer, and it's on there. But send me some. I'm looking at the comments. I've been missing them. It's like. Uh... Larry Anybody Riker, do, dude, send us some stickers. We'll put it on our. Uh, well, so then he said, yeah, Ryan, ask for forgiveness later. I'm like, yeah, I don't even ask for, for you know. He said he he runs a concert venue in Fredericksburg, Texas. I know where Fredericksburg is. He said, man, the city wants to fight. Fredericksburg is kind of a a touristy sort of town in East Texas. Not a giant town, but it's like it's not small though either. But oh yeah, it's funny. See. All right. Fat Philosopher said his wife beat cancer for 30 years by going vegetarian. That's awesome. I'm beating diabetes by eating meat. So there you know. go. Hey, so anybody that is watching or watches later, if you guys want to send us some stickers, send us some stickers. Flipside music in Denver. We'll yeah. And they I, gotta sounds funny. I know it's gonna sound funny when I say it, but we'll uh, we'll put it on our poll. They need some stickers for their poll. Yeah. We got to stick up our poll. Hey, so y'all going to do a video, uh, like tour type thing? Yeah, we're, we we missed the live stream today just because we're we're just so still trying to put things in the place. Um, opening boxes, getting stuff on the floor, moving. We're still putting up slat walls, still organizing and all that stuff. So I think maybe the next live stream – we might compile a bunch of pictures and all that stuff and do it there and then, or I'm just going to put up a picture or put up a video of, you know, kind of all the progress from all the pictures I took from along the way. Matt, the lobster is giving me some questions about the carnivore. He said, is eating meat making you healthy? Is a lack of refined sugars? I haven't had refined sugars in forever. So it's like, I've not been eating refined sugars. So that's not the, that's not the, not the thing, but yeah, sugar is bad for you. Most grains, refined stuff is bad for you. But uh, yeah, Fat Philosopher is like, here, just go watch about a hundred hours of carnivore videos from actual doctors, medical doctors. That's what I did, and it's really, it's really eye opening. All the the data that they've shown, which is, you know, the opposite of what a lot of uh, studies have shown. But the studies, coincidentally enough. Have been paid for and bought for by pharmaceutical companies and billion dollar businesses. If Coca Cola spent five billion dollars on a study to show you that uh, you know sugar's okay, if didn't R.J. Reynolds spend a bunch of money to tell everybody, "Hey man, these things don't cause cancer," right? I was I was literally about to say. So if Marlboro was like, "Hey, we we just spent ten billion dollars on a that says uh, smoking's fine," you trust me. It's right. fine. It's right. fun. Smoke more Chesterfields. They give you energy. Yeah. That's been funny. I've been watching these doctors, man. And some of them are like, I mean, these dudes are freaking brain, literal brain surgeons. 
and cardiovascular surgeons. Like guys, not like you're just your Joe Schmo down the street doctor, but some of them, and they're like, they've, they've read all the studies and all this stuff. And they're like, bro, they're all lying to you. Like number one, there's proven that, you know, one of these companies paid off. They literally, there's emails. They literally bribed like five Harvard professors to lie about a study to get their thing. There's like, we have the emails. It's like, but everybody's like, oh, you got to eat this. And he's like, you know, so the government and billion dollar industries don't, never lie to us to make more money. All right. That's a, that's a, that's a take there. <laughs> you got to be. You know, especially now, it's even worse. They said the meat industry funds a lot of research. It's like not nearly as much as Coca-Cola and all the pharmaceutical companies. Well, said, of- that's, actually, that's actually not true, Pat Philosopher, because these guys are trying to talk to the meat industry to say, you guys really should fund some studies because you'll actually, because the meat industry doesn't fund studies for that because it's like millions of dollars for these studies. So, but anyways, you like I said, have, I you're have hundred videos about it. So, but yeah, yeah. You're gonna have folks that are going to believe that or believe this. And then it's, I feel like it's whatever works best for you. Go, go do that. Yeah. Somebody else do yeah. whatever they want to do. If they feel is the thing that's going to work for them, you know what sure. I mean? Because yeah, big businesses are always going to try to lean things in their direction. Oh yeah. You know, regardless of what happens, the government, the industry, the, you know, the, Agriculture the industry, yeah. like food, you know, the food industry. I mean, they got people that try to figure out how to make you eat more of their garbage. Right. Instead yeah. of like, you could just make some fruit. You could literally eat things from your backyard that are healthy. Like you just build a garden and you know what's in it. And you could eat food healthy with no pesticides and no Monsanto nonsense and whatever. But, mm-hmm. you know, you got it. It takes time to do that. And we live in a world uh, based on sound bites and, you know, mm-hmm. 10 second clips and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it, and we just need you just need to take time to do the extra work and, and yeah. look at stuff. you know, and yeah. find out what works for you, because what works for somebody isn't what works for everybody. You know, right. everybody's a little bit different, right? Everybody's yeah. genetics are a little bit different. Some people can tolerate some people can tolerate things that other people can't tolerate uh, just because you genetically can tolerate things. Like some people can't eat peanuts and it kills them. Right. So some people can eat peanuts and it doesn't kill them. Does that mean, I mean, peanuts are still bad for some people, <laughs> for some people they're like, well, they're not killing you, but are they doing something negative to you? Because they could be yeah. doing something negative to you that's not killing you, but it, it certainly ain't helping you, you know. So I mean, technically, this is poison. Well, but it's delicious. Well, it's delicious poison. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm not drinking a case of it tonight. So, well, you know, moderation is a good thing. You yeah, yeah. Do it for you, you know. I saw a thing crazy yesterday. It was a couple days ago, I was watching something, and the guy was talking about, you know, the sugar that we eat today is not even the same kind of sugar that they had in the 1950s. Like just your white table sugar. If you've got a bag of table sugar from the 50s and there's some table sugar now, it's not even the same. Like what we have now is significantly worse than it was in the 50s. You know? Yeah, it's like super sugar. Yeah. All the shit that we have now is like super, so- like over the top version. I mean, everything, even weed, you know, like. Yeah. I mean, weed in the 70s was, yeah, you get high. They have shit now that you like, you just walk by it and you're like, I got to go listen to me some Pink Floyd, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, like, you know, it is like, it's leaps and bounds more powerful. Same thing with sugars and yeah. corn syrups and all this stuff. It's crazy. I was watching this. You might get it. You know, I've been, again, so like, I am a researcher. Like I, when I get on a kick for something, it might be guitars, it might be, you know, diet, it might be working out, it might be freaking mountain bikes. Like, and Angela will tell you like, oh yeah, when Ryan gets into something new, it's like, (laughs) I'm buying books, I'm watching like 500 videos a day. Like I just like, I go hardcore on it and I'm like, huh. And I kind of decide what I want to do. I I just, I go over the top with that stuff. So this is what it's been like for this whole carnivore thing. For like 60 days i was like all right well let me get all the information i can possibly find you know from like whatever both camps i'm not i haven't really found any camps that are like that's really bad it's gonna kill you all, all i found is guys who are like i found this one guy man 
He was like a home. He has a YouTube channel. He's like a homestead guy. He lives off somewhere in uh, like some small town. He owns a, a theater where they just they put movies on, but they don't. It's like two bucks for popcorn, and they, it's like three dollars for a movie. It's like for a small town thing, and it's like you know. But he's like he started doing. He had arthritis in his foot. Like one of his toes was so bad, like he couldn't walk. Crazy arthritis. He had you know like diabetes. He had. Um, depression. He was on like all these 15 different medications. It was just crazy stuff. Like they thought they're going to have to cut his toe off because it was so bad. And he showed pictures. And then he did this carnivore thing. I just stumbled across him after these other things. And he was like, let me tell you what happened to me after 30 days. Well, first of all, his arthritis is gone. He lost like 40 pounds. And he's like, he doesn't take anxiety medicine or depression medicine. He doesn't take blood sugar medicine. He doesn't like do all this. Like he's like, He's like literally like a whole new guy. And he's like super excited. He makes a new video every single day. And I watched a couple of them. He's like, day 51 of carnivore. Here's what happened to me. Blah, 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 blah. They're like, day 52 of carnivore. Here's what happened to me. Blah, blah, blah. And he gets a bazillion views because it's like a it's like a trendy thing. This is why like, I should probably make one. <laughs> the smart thing would have just made a video and kept it short instead of two and a half hours of whatever. But it was a... Uh, I've been watching a few, but I had to stop watching them because like, okay, you're not telling me anything new. I, I learned everything I need to learn from you in two videos. But right. he's getting traction because there's someone who's never seen you. Who This is his 87th video is their first video he's seen. Right. It was crazy. And he was like, and he showed pictures like this is, you could go back and watch his YouTube channel and like look at him from 30 days ago and 50 days ago. And like, just oh, bro, like a whole new guy. And I, I think I, was, I saw a fat philosopher made a comment here about, um, you know, having quality meats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I think like if you're gonna do it, grass fed the the, the get the stuff that's because in Colorado there are grow there there you know we have a fairly large meat industry here, and you can get there are um, you know local ranches that don't do all the GMO feeding. You know they do it's all natural grass fed, grass finished, not just you know. And that's the whole shit is some of this stuff is. Yeah, it's marketing. So it's like, yeah, it's grass fed. Yeah, it's grass fed, but they don't finish them that way or something to, right. you know. So you well, got sure. But I think that's a good point is to yes. um, to be careful what you're doing. You know, be careful what you're eating. So you're just not eating a bunch of junk. Right. That's, that's you know, chemicalized. Bye, bye Big John. Big John's got to go. He's, he asked, or he did say, fat philosopher, he's in Japan. So he lives in Japan. So it's tomorrow in Japan. Wow, okay. They said corn syrup has been a disaster. Yes, that's oh, a disaster. Corn syrup, shit. Yes, shit. worst corn. thing. Worst thing could have done. The thing I have issues with corn syrup, but I have issues with our food system. I have issues with our our healthcare system because I think it's all circular. They just want to, you know, they just want to keep getting us sick so you can they can make more money on you being sick. Yeah. One but of the doctors offer they don't want to offer any healthcare stuff where, but because then they would have to make you. Because then they would have to make it so that, that, that they offer healthier things. Because if they're paying the dime, then all of a sudden it would the tables would turn. It, 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 it's a, it's a the, you know. One of the doctors I watched, he was saying this. He's like, listen, I mean, he's a doctor. He talks to sales reps. All he's like, no farm, pharmaceutical company wants you to get off of their medicine. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. It's like, no, nobody wants you to stop being their customer. You know what I mean? Because right. they they want you to take more. It's kind of it's kind of crazy. Well, yeah, you don't want you don't yeah. It, Flat philosopher says uh, quality meats would be wild small fish like sardines and anchovies. I'm Italian, man. We eat that shit all the time. Oh yeah, man. I love well, it. Hey. You know, we I eat pasta. So here's the thing: is I've been trying to like make our own bread because I'm tired of eating crappy bread. Yeah, where I grew up, there was bakeries that made it out of real ingredients. So I'm trying to figure out how to make quality bread at home. I can make myself. I'm going to start making my own pasta again because I know and I'm getting imported flour from Italy to make that stuff because the string because there are more stringent regulations on the products that are overseas in the UK in the, you know in the oh. UK or in the EU than here cuz here they'll basically just poison the shit out you and let you go yeah. go, okay. go blind, yeah. you know. There's stuff that we buy in our grocery stores here that they don't sell in other countries because it's like we don't we don't feed that to our people, right? Because that's because it's why would you 
why would you want to kill your own population? Like, we kind of need our population. If we ever go to war with y'all, we need to be stronger, faster, healthier, you know? so We're not. We're fatter, uglier, and dumber. <laughs> That's not yeah, true. Sure. Yeah. 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 Well, this this we're guy was watching. Was watching pile. Yeah. This guy was watching. I'll have to find this thing. The homestead guy. He was like, his, he's like literally a new guy. And he's not, a, he was on like 10 or 15 medications. And now he's on none. It's like, it looks great. And he says, I meet people every day and they're like, oh, I'm, I'm glad your depression's gone. I'm glad your diabetes is gone. I'm glad all your arthritis is gone and you can actually move now. And I'm this, this, and this. He's like, but what, let's see your LDLs. Let's see your LDL levels. Like they want to see his cholesterol. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're like, oh, that's great. You fix this mountain of stuff where you're like, I mean, you just wanted to die because you're so miserable. And now you're like this, but let's see your cholesterol. So that I thought that was kind of funny because everybody says that. And I was like, oh, right. that's a good question. But some of the doctors, they're like, you know, like they did a study and I'm like, like 150,000 Americans who had heart attacks, half of them had low cholesterol. So half of them had high cholesterol, half of them had low cholesterol. So your are and those guys were like, listen, cholesterol doesn't matter to heart attacks. There was one study paid, paid for by one company that was selling medicine to keep your cholesterol down that they kind of said something about it. He's like, but... If 100,000 people had heart attacks and half of them were high and half of them were low, that's obviously not the cholesterol. I was like, well, I, never, I never heard that. You know. Oh, uh, there's, you know, you, like we said earlier, they kind of skew things. Yeah. That philosopher says, don't, don't invade Japan. Like, yeah. Well, I don't think that's going to, I don't think, I actually have a channel here that I watch because I don't have cable and I get, it's an over the air channel and I can't remember what it's called. And, LN or something, and it's it's based out of Japan, and I like to watch it because I get to watch sumo, which is awesome. Like sumo is a, is an awesome sport to watch. If you oh, don't wow. right, if you don't watch it, like I suggest, it's a lot of fun. Really, right. they got sumo matches on it, but then they have these really cool stories about the folks in Japan and how they kind of do stuff, and it's really oh, yeah. interesting to see how other folks in other countries do certain things and how they treat each other and different respect levels and all this other cool yeah. stuff, just different hobbies. And it's pretty interesting. And it's like, man, it is so detached. We did watch the video one time and yeah. it was about how they make dye in Japan. There's a certain way they make a certain color of like, it's like an indigo dark blue dye. Mm -hmm. that they, they make it old school, like, like real old school. Like super crazy old school, and it's like super expensive, and it's how they make you know certain things. And we watched that, I was like that's pretty rad. And it's like this old family who's like they go and doing it like like they did it three hundred years ago. It's like, huh? I was about to say, it's like I don't think Japan has any resources we want, or America would have already invaded. We only maybe, invade places. We only invade third world countries that have resources we want. Maybe guitars. Maybe this stuff from. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're gonna invade and take all of the ESP guitars and bring them back. And put a finger. Take all the, I'll, we'll take all the old Grecos. Yeah, I'd love to go to. I'd love to go to go to Japan. That'd be super awesome. I mean, just like. Oh, I'd love to too. But we'd probably be giants. Yeah. Well, yeah, for sure. And then I'll bring Nicholas. He'll be literally a giant. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, he said. You you gotta bring, I gotta bring. Hang on, I gotta bring Davo outside because all uh, right, he may have to poo. Yeah, he said the no, Indio no, die no. is in Tsukushima, right, Japan. On. Very cool stuff. Yeah, we watched. We watched a um. I I, forgot, I don't know if it was a YouTube video or a, a Netflix thing. It was something. We watched this whole thing about how they make the die, uh, and we watched another one about like a seamstress. Or a, a place where, like, they repair clothing. Like, you can bring in this, you know, a really expensive suit. And it maybe has a tear in it. And it showed this family. It was an older man. And he taught his daughter how to do it. And they had, like, these, you know, giant, like, magnifying glasses. And they got these little needles. And they're, like, like repairing a rip in a suit. Like, like literally, like, one thread at a time. And I watched that. And I was, like, that is crazy. Like, like, so you, you might have a rip in your nice suit jacket and then they can fix it like it was never ripped. Like it looks like 
it it never was torn. So dastardly Dave, hello. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, dastardly Dave's in the house. Dastardly Dave. It is already like 10.04 in the tech. What's up, Davo? How you doing, buddy? So he said some Japanese men are getting taller. Somebody's somebody's six foot three. I'm six one, so I got a feeling I'll still be Yeah. On the taller side of things. Yeah, I watched a show about a um a gentleman that was like a third generation um bonsai guy. And it oh, yeah. was really just super cool. And there was a lot of other stuff. There was like, because um, like I said, it's, it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a channel that comes out of Japan and it's just, I find it incredibly interesting, but I love it when Sumo is on. That is absolutely my, absolutely my favorite thing is, <laughs> you know, and it's funny because you'll get one dude that I'm like, man, that dude's from like Burbank bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And like, he big, white but he looks like he's from California. There's no way. And I think that there's got to be, you know, like the oddball foreigner that, that gets into it. That, that you know, but it's, it's a great sport, man. If you get a chance, it's a, it's a lot of fun to watch. I've never watched like a real match. It's just you see stuff in movies. Well, they, or- they sit down and they do the thing and they're like, <sighs> and then they snatch up their cash out of a white envelope like, like they just won a bar fight. It's pretty, it's pretty cool, but it's, um, it's interesting because if you watch long enough, you start understanding the moves and how they, yeah. how they do it. Like there's technique. There's, Oh, there's total technique, but some of the guys and there's a slappy thing and that the leverage it's really, once you start to watch it and get and understand kind of their technique, it's man, I tell you what, it's a really fun sport to, to wow. watch. It happens fast. So it's kind of I, cool. I dig it. I enjoy watching stuff from like from other countries. Like I watch, like when it comes like guitar YouTubers, like I watch Ola, England. Yeah. First, every now and then we talk. I'll message him. He'll message me back. I'm like, oh, you know, because we did a video together back at Nam way back, and he's like, oh, hey Ryan, just you know, you know, if I'm on his thing, he'll be like, oh, it's Ryan from Art Music. I'm like, Ola knows who I am. That's crazy. That's you know, because he's he's big time guitar, but I like watching this stuff. I was like, what's it like living in Sweden? Like, what are your houses like? I'm like, and he's like, I'm going to the store. I'm like, man, your grocery stores are, that's weird. But I, I find that fascinating. Even even in the old days when I used to watch a lot of UK YouTube, I found it interesting. Well, how do people in England live? And of course, I still have friends who live in England. And I'm like, well, what are they doing? You know, or Spain or, you know, anywhere. It's like, it's just, you know, fascinating. And that's somebody told me that a long time ago. They're like, you should make videos about, you know, living in Texas because it's interesting. It's interesting not to me, but to people who live in Sweden or right. Russia or, you know, Korea or, you know, England. They're like, what's like Texas? I'm like, oh, I, gu- I guess. I mean, the same way I'm, I'm fascinated by what it's like to live in Greenland. People right. are like, Texas is like, wait, you got a horse? I'm like, well, no, not anymore. I mean, I used to. <laughs> like, you used to? Do you have a gun? I'm like, I can neither confirm nor deny. Well, you can just go, yeah, I do. Plenty. He's like, well, I lost them all in a boating accident. I had a bunch, <laughs> but then I went out on a lake. I don't know what happened. They fell out. It's, you know, but don't come to my house unannounced, you know. Well, it's funny because uh, over at Texas, the, my friends over at Texas Toast Guitars, um, like two, I don't know, it was a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I don't know. But they had a gentleman that came from the UK. His name was Paul, Paul Hall. And Paul was super cool, dude, and got to hang out with him. And it was interesting because, you know, he was interested in how things were here. And, you know, I was kind of interested in how they do it. I have lost lost her. He had to go. Oh, he's leaving. See you later, dude. He's got a business trip in Hiroshima today. So ah, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, Dastardly Dave's been at a number of the Texas Toast Guitars classes. Oh, he's been, really? He's been out here and yeah, oh yeah. Dave's been out a number of times. We've gone drinking. I'd like to take one of those classes. I think that'd be fun. That's a lot of fun. Those guys are cool. I mean, you I have you still so have classes? I pop in, we go drinking, stuff like that, and hang out at Jim Jam Jimmy's house sometimes. So it's pretty cool. Have you actually done one of the classes and built one? 
I haven't done one of the classes, but I've used their gear equipment because I'm like, hey, Matt, can I come over and use the planer? Because I'm building the thing. I got a I got an end table over here, and I had to use his his uh, sander planer thing. Uh, I'm like, I once I got it all screwed together, the boards didn't quite <clears throat> right. And I was like, hey, can I swing by and throw this thing th- through? You know, half a dozen times till it works out. So, um, hi, hi, Joe, Joe McCarthy. Hey, Joe. He's got some good. He might have got some guitars from you, but he's got some guitars from me. So. He's a good guy. Oh, Dastardly Dave's coming out for the $400 guitar contest. I'm going to be a judge, so you better make yours good, bud. Oh. Uh, I'm nice. going to me, Brian, Jim Jam, Jimmy, and uh, Mike Learn. So I'm, Mike Learn's a local artist. He's done a lot of stuff for, like, D'Angelico, uh, Alvarez. He, was, he did a lot of uh, airbrush for... Uh, Easy Rider magazine on that's motorcycles the, and stuff. That's the guy who's in Don's band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's bass, plays bass. Yeah, yeah. So I was talking to Don the other day. He's super awesome, by the way. Yeah, Don's a good, good, good dude. That's why when I suggested, I was like, yeah, he'll, he's cool. Yeah, he's been super helpful. I'll message him and he'll be like, hey, oh yeah, blah blah. He's just like telling me stuff. I'm like, thank you. You know, I was playing something the other day and he messaged me and he sent me a video and he's like, hey, I was like, I don't want to tell you what to do, but I saw you were playing this thing and this, I kind of learned it like this. If you watch a bunch of live videos, Billy actually does this kind of a thing. I was like, I hope he's like, I hope you're not offended. I didn't. I'm like quite the opposite. Thank you very much. I I appreciate any information you have to share with me about anything about this stuff. Thank you so, so much. You know, but he was, I saw, I watched some of their videos and they're doing their thing. And he was playing this, the gold top, this like gold Les Paul looking thing with the pinstraps. I was like, so I got one. It's got like two knobs on it, and like, what? What? Is, I messaged. I'm like, what's that gold top in this video? And he's like, oh, I built that. He said it was from some company that you can buy kits. Yeah, it's, but it's like it's not like a hundred fifty dollar kit. It's like four or five hundred dollars. It's like a le- like yeah, like a legit kit. Yeah, and I was looking them up, and people were like, oh yeah, these are good. These are like, I mean, you still got to paint it and put it together and all the stuff. But he said, well, his bass player is like this world class, world famous painter guy. Totally. Like, like literally, like literally, like the best around kind of a guy, you know, award winning stuff. And so he showed him how to paint it. And so, like, they paint their own guitars and stuff. And so he built that. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. So, so yeah, I started looking at those kits. Get a chance, you know, check out Mike Learn stuff. And it's funny because people give shit to Mike because it's like, oh, well, you can't Google Mike Learn guitar, you know, because it's like, Learn guitar. I mean, where the hell right. is his stuff? Uh, but Mike's a cool dude, and yeah, he does amazing, amazing work. You know. Yeah, he said a lot of the time, a lot of their, uh, a lot of the um, the guitars that'll play for their El Loco Fandango is like they built, and then Mike painted them. I was like, that's a handy skill to have, you know. Yep, we. I did a thing with. Uh, uh, Don a few years ago at the charity. So we did a whole restring event uh, to restring a bunch of extra guitars that we had for the charity stuff. So yeah, I got to meet him there. He's a cool dude. Yeah, he's been super like nice. Well, that's why I turned you on to him because I'm like, if you're going to do the ZZ Top thing, I mean, I've caught them before and I'm like, yeah, they're, they're killing it. I've watched a bunch. They have a bunch of YouTube videos of their shows. You know, not always like a bajillion views, but they're up there and I'm like, that's really good. All right. That's good. I like that. Yeah. And okay. Don has the car too. He told me that. We were talking yeah, about hot rods. That's the whole thing. He's got the whole, he's got the car and everything. Yeah. He, well, he, he was telling me, he's like, he says, you know what's crazy is I have the car. And I'm like, oh, I told him that. He's like, he's like, I have had the car for years, like 20 years or something crazy. He's had it for a long time. And just because he likes, he's into hot rods. Right. And he said when they formed the band, they were talking, and the guys, he's like, Well, you know, I have the car, right? And they're like, What? Said, well, yeah, I, I already have the car. And he's like, That's crazy. I sent him a picture. I was like, doing that. I mean, that's like perfect. What, what are the odds? Yeah. I sent him a picture. I was like, Well, I got a, like a 1937 Nash Lafayette car. And he's like, What? I showed up, sent him the picture. It was my great granddad's car, and I have it. It's in storage. And he's like, Oh, it's a four door. You can chop it. You can do this. He's like, that's awesome. I'm like, yeah, I just need a load of money to do it. But 
I got a friend who used to do that for 18 years. He's a barber now, Pete. Pete, oh, who made this he made this pit guard for me. He uh -huh. used to work for some fancy hot rod place where they, you know, like those cars that go to auction for $1.4 million. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. That's what he did for 18 years. He got tired of laying on concrete and fabricating stuff. So now he cuts hair. That makes sense. But I know a guy. And I even took him with me to get the car when I got it from my mom's. And he's like, oh, this is awesome. He's like, yeah, we could take this out and do this. And I'm like, I know a guy. It's Thank you for hanging out. Take you, he's going back to watching something. Thank you for hanging out, Terry. Appreciate it, man. Good seeing you, Terry. Sorry we missed it today. We didn't do our, we didn't do our stream today. So a lot of these, a lot of folks jumped in too. We, we have a lot of crossover. We got a Venn diagram of of uh subscribers so See, you did do a live stream today it's just with me i did it with you yeah which is good it's you know, kind of the, it's almost the same thing we, larry we right rolling up to it about 3 30 quarter to four and dylan was working on the project in the middle and i was working on a project in the back and i'm like dude we we gotta get we gotta get this shit done and like we can't sit down for an hour to, to <laughs> we got we stuff. Need, we need to get this stuff done because neither one of us have, you know, we're all working. Both of us have worked, can, you know, a number of days consecutively. Um, now, Larry, Larry said, I wrote down this week to order an RNA shirt and a flip side shirt. Crazy to come across a live show with both of you. Universe is telling me to get that order in, I guess. Yeah. I guess so, Larry. Can I recommend the brand new flip side shirt that's got a spaceship on it? Is that out yet? Is that even a thing? We got to put it up on the website. I got them printed. I just got to get it up on the website. That's like they're pretty. They're pretty cool. Actually, Dastardly Dave, I think, had the first one, and I think oh. you had the second one. Oh, because I, I told tell you, you don't show it to anybody. Don't wear it on the video. This is not out to the public yet, but I'll hook you up. I don't think you told me that. I think I just opened the case, and there it was. So I've been wearing well, it because I already knew that you have a beard that will cover. Oh yeah, you can't see half of it. Right, yeah. so nobody's going to know what it was anyway, so I figured it didn't matter. I was wearing a sweet, cool G.I. Joe shirt the other day. G.I. Joe, you know, and I was like, I put a little post up and it's like, you know, knowing it's happening. But I'm like, you can't see it. You can't. Right. It's up. I had to be like, G.I. Joe. Because <laughs> knowing is half the battle and the other half is extreme violence, according to <laughs> Flint. So one half is knowing, the other half is extreme violence. <laughs> That's what you got to have. So, Yeah, the shirt does cover it. I don't know what's different about that one, the new shirt. I don't know if it's the material, but I'm like, it's super comfortable. And I like it a lot. Yeah, I'd have to, I don't even have one myself yet. Well, you're missing out because it's super rad. It's well, my I'm favorite non-RNA shirt. I will be getting one. Oh, I need another RNA shirt myself because... My all the RNA shirt I had is disintegrated. <laughs> it's it fine. So at this point, it, 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 it has just it ceases to be. It is no more. Well, it's been nine years. That's a pretty good run. Probably. Yeah. You tell me, you text me what size you want. I'll see what I got or what I can work out. Well, if I start the carnivore diet, I might not know. <laughs> see, I've got I bought this the other day, it's an XL tall. From um, Kohl's. Mm -hmm. Kohl's has a pretty decent big and tall section. So if you have a child who's six foot eight, another child who's six foot six. And I mean, I'm only six foot two, but I have learned that I like tall tees because you can raise your hand and nobody sees your belly button That's or true. your butt crack. You know, there's no plumber crack if you buy a tall tee. These were like seven bucks at Kohl's and they're like, oh, feels so good. Uh, and so this is an XL, but it's already like it looks it's getting kind of baggy. Well, that's because you're shrinking. I know. Well, what I learned, what Angela tells me is because I wear shirts, I just feel comfortable. She's like, she's like, babe, that shirt actually makes you look bigger than you are because it's so baggy. Yeah, bulky. Like, you need more like tighter. And I'm like, I don't like tighter because then you can see my my all the stuff. She's like, You're fine. You're you're all right. You're like. You're not, I don't think you're as big as you think you are. I'm like, I don't know. I have body dysmorphia or something. But Well, dude, I, like I said, I saw that picture the other day. I'm like, man, Ryan's leaning out. I actually thought that. When I took it and I looked at the picture, I'm like, huh. I actually had to take that picture twice because 
my last belt that I have that I really love, this is nice tactical belt. It, it only goes so far. Like it doesn't have holes. It has this weird latching thing mm-hmm. and it wouldn't get any tighter. So I had to get my, uh, ugh, my like, like an actual like policeman. It's like this real thick leather belt. <laughs> it's, got, it's got this real thick buckle on it. Uh-huh. And I was it's a truck and I saw the picture. I was like, you can see that belt really well, but it doesn't look like a belt. It looks like something else is going on. I'm like, hey, it's like, hey, I'm, I'm gonna take that picture again and remove the giant leather belt. So, yeah, like, wow, I was actually you, like, you are excited that you that you paid that thing off. Oh my god, <laughs> both of our cars are paid off now. That's so, awesome, bro. That's like, now I can send more money to my credit cards so that eventually I can buy more stuff for the store. <laughs> What's up, Peter? In my life, once I've paid off all my debt, I can then buy a buttload of uh, inventory for the shop. So it's not a bad idea. So that's the idea. Joe said he just started the carnivore diet again. It's been stinking amazing for us, Joe. Like it's been like crazy amazing for us. Not just for me, but for Angela too, for a different set of reasons. Because she's a lady, and I am not a lady. I'm a man, man. She's a lady, lady, and uh, it's helped her with some stuff that's been a problem for her since she was little like well that's good to hear that it's it's it's, on some issues it's it's like stupid so i don't know i mean these some some of the doctors i watch like tried for 30 days i mean you can do anything you can smoke for 30 days and it's not going to kill you if you've never smoked it's not going to be good for you but 30 days really isn't really a big deal you're not going to do any permanent damage one way or the other. I mean, unless you're doing like, I don't know, meth, but you know, yeah, I think meth would be bad. That's probably bad. Crack for 30 days would be, I mean, cocaine is probably fine because sugar, our refined sugar nowadays is basically meth and cocaine. Essentially. That's why you lose all your teeth from eating sugar all day or meth, which, you know, right. But uh, it'll do it as well. Next thing you know, you're going to be out in the street living in an RV. Down by the river. Down by the river, near near my store. Eating government cheese. <laughs> hey, listen, I ate government cheese when I was a kid. I, I think that's why I love cheddar. I, my parents fed me peanut butter, so I think that's why I got fat. I used to eat government. We had government cheese, and it came in a brown box. I remember that shit. I love cheese. Plain brown box, and it was a big-ass chunk of cheddar cheese, and I loved that shit. That sounds, like, amazing. It was great. I, I think, like I said, I think that's why I like cheddar cheese. Yeah, I like cheese a lot. So luckily, there was a time that that's we had we had some government cheese. Luckily, on carnivore, you can have cheese for the most part. Oh, can you? Yeah. Well, it has to be. I eat a lot of Monterey Jack right now. It's okay. Can I eat Italian cheeses? Like, you, I think like you mozzarella just... cheese, but like, can I eat like the good stinky provolone and such? I don't know. You'd have to just, is there any carbohydrates in it? Like mozzarella actually has a little bit of carbs in it. I'd have to look, but I, it, I mean, our cheese is a thing. I love cheese. Yeah. So what I've, cause I never thought I used to just eat cheese. I don't know, but some cheese, like I love mozzarella too, but it actually, it might have like one gram of carb per however many servings or whatever. Cheddar, a cheddar thing has maybe some it's, it's supposed to be a zero carb diet. That's essentially a thing. Eat any meat, fish, fish. You can have eggs, bacon, ham, any meat you want. You know, pretty much anything you want except vegetables. <laughs> no vegetables or fruit or grains. But it's, it's any meat or animal product that's essentially zero zero carbs. Now again, I'm cheating a little bit. I have probably three grams of carbs a day because I have my blended coffees, but I'm still getting. I'm still probably getting 98% of the effectiveness, which is, it's been good. I might have but, to try to drop to try to lose some, drop, drop a few pounds I can't get rid of. Well, it was funny because my buddy Steven, my buddy Steve was trying to tell, was telling me all about it before I, I'd heard of it, but never really looked at it. And he was like, you should, I've been watching all these videos about it. You should try it. Cause he's, he's, I weigh less than he does now. <laughs> Just funny. Cause in the day, cause and he's lost some weight, but I'm like, He's like, bro, you're beating me. I'm like, I know. I shouldn't. I should. I've never weighed less than you. So that's weird. But he was telling me all about it. And I'm like, I don't know, man. 
I've been doing this Coach Greg diet for like three years, and it works pretty good. I mean, I've been cheating on him for six months, but other than the six months I've been cheating on him, it was great. So I'm just going to go back to that. And that I, was, I watched the Jordan Peterson video talking about it, what it did for him and his daughter, and like that all these health problems and it fixed. Well, it. that's where I first heard of it was him. Mm -hmm. I saw a video that he was talking about it, and I'm like, hmm, that's something. Then you. So yeah, that it, you kind of jumped in on that. And I was like, well, let me see what happens with Brian, Brian, with Ryan and see what happens. And we'll go from there. Yeah. Well, it's funny because my, my buddy Steve was all about it. And like we had lunch and we had, you know, we had breakfast together and, we, you know, I was having eggs and stuff. But I was like, I don't know about that, man. But I mean, I've been doing this. This is what's been good for me. Yeah, I've, I've cheated kind of. But, you know, whatever. And he's like, I'm thinking about doing it because my blood pressure's up and the blood sugar and I've you know, gained all this weight. I need to. Oh, I'm like, well, you know. So it was like a month later before I actually said, I think I want to try that. And then I told him about it. I was like, hey, I've been doing this for a week. And he's like, oh, man. I was like, have you started yet? Because he was like about to start the day after we had breakfast together. Oh. He never started it. <laughs> He still hasn't started it. And I was like, bro, I'm sending him text. I'm like, bro, I'm like down like 15 pounds. I'm like, I haven't taken metformin in, in 30 days. I'm like, no, you know, no blood sugar medicine. He's like, oh, man, he was going to try it. But him and his wife, they have a they have a baby, you know, in their 40s. They had a baby. Oof. And uh, yeah. And so it's like she's still nursing and stuff. So she's like, well, she doesn't really want to do it with the baby. And like he's trying to. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's, logistically, it's a challenge. I get like, I guess all I know is I had two friends die of heart attacks, you know, a couple of years ago. And that's what started me on this other diet. I had two good friends die and their, their wives and their kids are fine, but they're dead. Right. <laughs> and they were, and they were fat and didn't take care of them. So well, one was a cop. I mean, and he was probably, I don't know, but he was like overweight and like, high stress job and probably didn't eat. I'm like, well, that's what started all this, me getting really serious about it with that other diet, which worked really well for a couple of years. And then I started slipping. I'm like, I, I just need a reboot. Like unplug the router. Yeah. Try, yeah. Try something else for a bit. Plug Seven. it back in, get a little system reboot, and then maybe go back to eating my protein French toast and protein ice cream and like, you know, whatever. But but so far it's been so good, and the results have been better than I expected, and it hasn't been hard. And we're at, somebody said something I would do it, but it's too expensive. I'm like, we actually spend less money on food now. I mean, yeah, steaks are kind of expensive, but if all like there's been days where I've had like one steak, and that was it. Like I didn't eat anything else. Yeah, Not it was kind of sustain you through. Well, yeah, because like fat flush is something early, but have you tried intermittent fasting? I was like, I used to do that a while back and it works okay, I guess, but you know, calories. It works okay, but you could eat, you know, how many calories you could pack in in four hours? Oh, yeah. A lot. Ton. But what's been crazy is like, especially like the first week or two of this, I have like a big old steak about 11 o'clock. You know, I don't come to the shop until noon. So right. about 10, 10, about 10 45, I'll start making a steak, grilling it, whatever, and cooking it. And then like, I'll eat that big old steak. And be like, and I'll eat the whole thing. And I'll be like, oh, all right. I'm, and then like, I'm not hungry. I'm not trying to do the, the whole one meal a day, like OMAD, people do that thing. Right. There has been a, and I'm not really like, right now it's about two meals a day. But there have been a couple of days where I only had one, but it was because I wasn't hungry. Which was shocking because the week before I started this, I was eating all day long at the shop and I thought I was starving. I would go home at night. Was, shit. Yeah, I'm eating, eating crap. crap. I was eating crap all day long. And I'm like, I don't feel like I'm eating anything. I'm starving. Although I've already eaten like 2,500 calories of crap. And I'm like, right. Geez. So that was that was the craziest thing. Is like I have had days where like I didn't eat. I might have only eaten once or twice. I'm probably I'm probably intermittent fasting without trying to. Yeah, it's part of what you're doing. You just but it's the, but I'm not doing it on purpose. I'm just doing it because I'm not hungry. Right. I mean, now I'll drink, you know, a bunch of Dr. Pepper Zeros. The zero calories, zero problems. That's what I've been told. Yeah. That's if you, but you're a soda guy. Oh, I am. Uh oh, that was a good sound. I am significantly into the sodas. Yeah, Go I'm a big soda guy. So I'm like, yeah, it's all right. I don't, I'm okay without it, you know. 
Joe said his blood sugar dropped 60 points after he started the carnivore diet again. That's huge. A 60 point difference in your blood sugar. We had a Larry in here, right? It was going to buy a t shirt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did. What? Yeah, he bought a t shirt and a couple cables. Nice. I'm like, all right. Hey, thanks, Larry, if you're still in there, bud. That's crazy. Yeah. Very nice. Very cool. But hey man, I think I'm uh um I'm about to get going because I'm starving. Yeah, I still, got, I still got my dinner on the smoldering on the thing, and Dave's outside yelping. Well, it's been three hours, and I only meant to stream for like an hour, and then I was gonna go home and kick a steak. I'm probably not gonna eat a steak at 10 30 at night though. Yeah, so. it's 9.30 here, but I'm starving. I haven't eaten since, like, 1. So you're living to, I'm going to bed because I'm exhausted. Yeah, you're living on Denver time. Living on Denver time. All right, man. Hey, thank I'm you for coming on. I got to go. <laughs> thank you for coming on and, uh, you know, hanging out and chatting. That was pretty rad. So I was about to wrap it up, and I was like, oh, all right. I'm already in. He's, he's probably got a minute. To hang so yeah well i appreciate you inviting me in man it was always you know always good to hang and talk to you and all that good stuff always and i'll, I'll take some more pictures later this week and send you or i'll do a little video we'll give you a walk yeah, you know, yeah good. i'll uh start looking at septim beard if i yeah. can well once i get a once i get a better understanding of time frames i'll let you know man yeah i might be able to make that first weekend work maybe because there's five, there's five, there's five Fridays in September. And normally on a fifth Friday, we don't teach lessons because the kids have already had their four weeks of lessons. Yeah. So if there's a fifth Friday, we take that day off. What I might do is take the first Monday, the first Friday off. And the kids will still all have their four Fridays of lessons. We'll probably be closed for Labor Day. So I might have a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And I'm retired from the church musician game, so I don't have to play on Sundays. Then you got to come out, man. You know, if you come out, you could either get a whole, if you come out solo, you can stay here if you want. Right. If you come out with Ange, Angela, you can, you know, I got my nephew here now, so I don't have a room for you guys to right. stay in, but I try to figure out some accommodations if you want. Now, I'll have to talk to her about it. Because I, I don't know if I'm allowed to come back. If he wants to come, then obviously that changes it up. If it's just you, you're, you know, yeah. you're like, well, yeah, I'm sitting on the couch or whatever, you know. Yes. He wants to come because Denver's friggin' awesome. And, uh, yeah, you know, when I, go, when I go awesome places by myself, it's, you know, although she went to the Dominican Republic with her cousin and a couple of friends a few months ago. And she went to... North Carolina. I mean, it was for an event she was a guest speaker at, but I'm like, but you know, so I don't know. Maybe we'll see. Well, check it out and let me know. I'll get. I'll like. I'll keep you in the loop as far as when I when I know, um, when I could really nail it down. Right. We'll we'll figure it out. We'll probably. I bet we can make it work. I don't know how much tickets are. I have to start looking at airline tickets. It's Texas, you're down the street. You're fine. It's just right. It's right over there. It's I'll just right drive. I just yeah. drive the paid off Escalade 13 hours. It's a long drive, man. That's a long drive. It's a long, I did it. It's a long drive. That thing has 200,000 miles on it. So I don't know if I should drive it to Denver, but whatever you do, man, I, I, I cut through the tip of Oklahoma and stopped in this little town. And I remember, I never smelled piss smell as strong as whatever that town in Oklahoma is. It might have been pissed oh. in Oklahoma. There's Ooh. a place. There's a place up in the Panhandle that is like basically a giant cattle yeah, lot. That's that must have been where I was because it yeah. smelled like. Oh my god! As soon as you drive through, it's like whoa! I got out of the car because I had the AC running, you know, and keeping the recirculating. I opened the door and I damn near fell over with the smell of of cow piss. And yeah, it, cow piss and crap. It was awful. It's like I was like, oh, I got to fill up and go because this. I'm not used to. I'm a I'm a city kid. I'm yeah. not used to country smell. I'm that's, like, oh, I gotta that's, go. that's pretty extreme, even for the country. It was 
it it burns the nostrils. It was intensity in ten cities live at Budokan. It was yeah. Oh man, I tell you what. All right, man. Well, thank you so much. We'll talk soon. We'll figure it out. I can't wait to come up. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be great. I'm excited. Sounds cool, man. All right, dude. Talk to you later. Thanks for having me on. I got to figure out how to get out of this thing. All right, I'll see you guys later. Everybody that has been here, uh, come and subscribe to us. Yeah, go go subscribe to Flipside Music. All right, I'll see. You I only later. talk about you in every video, so it's fine. Yeah, I know. Right. you are a shameless promoter. Yes. All right, All right. Later, dude. bye, dude. All right, guys, uh, that was really great. I appreciate it. I getting on there again. I did not mean to go for three hours and fifteen minutes. I just meant to go for a little bit and talk about our uh, our carnivore journey we've been on and how it helps me become a better guitar player. And then we segued to talking to Ike. Hey, Larry, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. That's crazy, Joe. I'm glad to hear about your uh, your blood sugar thing. The carnivore thing has been crazy good for us so far. Today's day 61 for me. I think I'm going to go for 90 days and see what happens. 30 days was great. Not, uh, 60 days has been great. I'm going to see what happens at 90, get all my blood work and stuff done again, because it's probably about time to do that anyways. Hat. And, um, yeah, so good to see you guys. Thank you all, all so much for hanging out. I have got to wrap this up and head home. So, Larry, appreciate that, man. That is you know, the little businesses, they appreciate you. Really, we, we do. Uh, I try to do that with uh, local businesses as much as I can. You know, sometimes you have to buy stuff from big stores and that's OK. But, you know, any business you give to the little guys is a tremendous thing for them. So thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you, Savinity. Appreciate all you guys. Let me see how to wrap this up. Oh, all right. So. Thank you for hanging out. We're going to, Angela and I are going to shoot Ask RNA tomorrow about noon. And um, if you have not asked a question on last week's Ask RNA video, go back into the channel to the last Ask RNA. And if you want to get a question, get that in there. And we're going to film answers tomorrow. Um, Ask RNA will probably be up on Sunday. So we're going to film it tomorrow. I'll have Friday and Saturday to edit. It'll probably go up on Sunday and we'll probably do a live premiere and watch the video together and chat. So thank you guys very much. All right. Appreciate you all so much. Uh, until next time, keep the music alive. Don't forget it. New music needs you. We need to keep the music alive for the next generation. So excited. Right. All right. Thank you guys. We'll see you next time. End broadcast.